I'm not going to lie to you. Oh There's been many a times that mm-hmm. I come into this podcast and I'm really, truly, thoroughly unaware of some of the things that go on. Now, y'all know I try yeah. to keep my ears to the street. I try to be in tune with everything and everybody that we do. If you want to go check out our Patreon, uh, Reggie actually gave us a quiz on how well we knew her. Yep. <laughs> I yeah. do want to say she provided two questions. Yeah. I got them both correct. Yeah. I should have kept going. You, you should have. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> I have faith in me that I would have cleaned these niggas up. But oh, please. I just didn't want to be racist. Needless to say. <laughs> needless to say. My favorite food is Korean barbecue, and it's okay you can say it because I'm Korean. That's not racist. <laughs> that's, that's not, not racist. racist for me to guess that it's her not? favorite food is Korean barbecue. Bro, you were supposed to say when yeah. she has told us that. that. Yeah, yeah. It. But I feel like it's like proper etiquette to just say I don't know, like American food first. That's racist. Yeah. You can't, that, you can't how just is that racist? You can't just assume everything. Yes. America doesn't run the world. It's Duncan. You think my favorite food is burgers? Does she look like a burger chick? I'm mm. not saying that, but like saying bodies don't even eat burgers. That's Korean, not okay, that is not true. They eat salad. Come on, man. Korean K-pop out the gate. I didn't even let it breathe. Right. Again, <laughs> like I said, I like to be in tune with my yeah. people. Yeah, you got to. And when I misstep yeah. on certain areas, yeah. I feel horrible about myself. Oh, man. You're it's hard for me to sleep. It's, well, hard, it's truly hard for me to sleep. What are you talking about? I had no idea hmm? that I was sitting next to a man who wears $280 t-shirts <laughs> each oh, and I every did. episode. You couldn't yes. tell? And he just does it so modest and well, so humbly. You but that's the how car. you have to do it. You, ha- you can't be flashy about it. You forget it. the car he drives. Ooh. You! Ooh. I'm looking, I'm thinking, <laughs> <laughs> I know we got a ton to talk, crazy. talk about today. <laughs> what and and we're going to get to it. There's so much to talk There's so much Drake to talk about. Like oh, yeah, We don't really sure. get a chance to talk about Drake, unfortunately. Wait, Drake did something this weekend? Yeah. I am. yeah. Mm. Drake, Drake put out an album. Charlamagne, Joe, a lot of people did a lot of things. Yeah. But I do want to start with uh, a weekly fit check. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't do this. Don't do this. So I got to get the drip. I got to get really? the leg. Because I come in here like... And I'm not, Damn. I'm not as fly as you. See, this is how I know. Here niggas go. And look. then we could really talk about the shit. I haven't seen y'all in a little bit. Shout out to Nyla. We dropped the Nyla Simone episode last week. Yeah, we saw each other four days ago, guys. Said, yeah, but I feel like I haven't. <laughs> seen I'm kidding. You. I'm kidding. I feel like I haven't bonded. Yeah, yeah. Go check that out though for sure. That was a great conversation with Nyla. Please, yeah. please yeah. do. But before we get to Nyla, before we get to Drake, yeah. fit check. Oh man. Drip check. Oh man. Do we want to start with the glasses, the hat, oh, the t-shirt, man. the shoes, the weight? The, I don't even know a nigga wearing Air Max 95s no more in 20. 23. So I really don't. Gotta and, bring it back. And it match. Yo, yeah, he, he has a little brown, brown in there, you know? I have to overcompensate. I wear Yeezys. <laughs> I wear uh, essential. You make it look like, good, though. But you make I, it look I, good no, for real. I, I be wearing the essential shit, too. I like it. But I never they can keep going for hours, guys, by the way. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like, y'all can't see it because I'm dark-skinned, but I'm blushing old. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm blushing old right now. Dark skin. Like, I, I see it. He turned what? purple. I yeah, see like, I, I slow down, I see. Hey, I'm in the same boat. I keep, 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 keep. I'm in the same all right, yeah, all right. But I will say this. Um, I feel honored that you guys are finally acknowledging, you know, some of the pieces I like to throw in here. I, like I do feel like we're a good looking cast though. Like I in general. So. Yes. I, I think, think we're so the best too, looking right? pot in the game. I think so too. I ain't gonna lie, I'll be trying to be the fly snigging this pot shit. So <laughs> no, you, you do. I, you yeah. probably will. No, because be I don't like I like casual fits on yeah. the pod because yeah. I can't wear my good pieces here because you know, just you it's him? uncomfortable to sit with them. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. And Savon's a very basic guy. He loves his earth tones. I do. So it's definitely you, Alex. But it Reggie, definitely is you. You do be yeah. eating us up here, but that is not true. That is not true. Not on the pod. She does without trying. She does without trying. Like I actually come here, I try sometimes. Oh, she gives us okay, so you're saying you give us a shot. Reggie when we're at the podcast but if we're anywhere in the outside uh, environment you're just gonna shit on us huh? Yes. when we have a guest that's true. that's true like when we have a guest yeah. or when we throw out with mixers yeah, yeah. I should never stand next to Reggie never. I definitely never. do dress up the most yeah out of you guys and you look great you, think? you, do, Aww, you do a really guys. good job you do a really Listen, good job I'll give you guys a little drip you know a little what you called it a drip, drip, drip check. A little drip check. Oh drip my god! Check. Shout out to Jeff Teague. I've been watching their podcast over there, and they kind of always start with, "Yo, did you get those shoes at the door?" Oh, do they really? I kind of feel like that right now. Shout out to Jeff Teague. Um, I will it. say right now, I put you on to this brand. Remember? Okay, talk to me. The brand is Honor the Gift, and you guys might know the owner. His name is Russell Westbrook. Shout out to Russell. Oh, yeah, That's wow. Right. Yeah, the uh, point guard of the. Los Angeles Clippers. No, wait, yes. no, it's like yeah. black and white on the shirt, black and white yeah. on the shoe, but then he has brown, but he has brown on the shoe. I'm telling Guys, you, he, he girl, makes it look come easy. Come on, YouTube and look at Alex's fit. Like, please. He, he, he make it look easy, man. Come he on, makes man. It look I try. Extremely Thank, easy. Yeah. Yo, Alex, let me hold five hours. Or something. Well, I don't oh got. I got to go buy clothes. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come back in here and look fly. <laughs> I'm, I'm not bad. 
about that. <laughs> there, there you that. go. Thank you for acknowledging y'all. Appreciate yeah, that. man. But uh, welcome back yeah. to the Need to Know podcast. Gang. It is what you need to know when you need to know on the Need to Know podcast. I am Savon. Yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy A, a.k.a. the Paco Rabon Poppy. I'm never alone. I'm always with the posse. And hello, guys. It's me, Reggie. I'm very excited for this episode. Yes. We have a special one here this week. Yes. 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 Looking yes. pretty in pink, too, might I add. You, oh, got, the, you. you got the pink like and the pink, the uh, pink phone case. I see you. I see you. I see you. And the pink nails. Oh, oh shit. shit. I didn't even know you did that. Yes. Wow. I bet. Kill him in the floor. Yo, can I get an intro? Like, <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> and if you don't know Pierre, our in house. Uh, <laughs> We gotta give him a cool name. Videographer, creative Not director, creative director. That's, creative what director. That's what I was about to the call him. The niggas that really don't be doing shit, they the creative director. <laughs> oh, so we gotta call my man the creative director. Yep. Our okay. in-house creative director. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I'll no. Take that. I like that. Oh my god! Like Holy that. shit! Yeah. We are also joined by somebody new. Oh. Right now? Yes. Facts. Or, oh, a few days ago, oh, oh, some family. A few episodes ago, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we said yeah. salutations and goodbye to Crystal. To Crystal, yes. yes. Crystal, Salute she to moved Crystal. on to brighter pastures. Yeah. And normally, when we hire somebody, I wouldn't show them love on the first day. <laughs> I'm dead ass. Like, if I get a new hire, like, you just hear my nigga do your job, go home, thanks. It just be me showing up. But today, up. like, I can't lie. I got a little bit of bias in, like, the new team member that we have. It's temporary. Why? I don't know how long it's going to last. Why but she is here with us today. Why do you have some bias today? Who's because that? it's my little sister. Oh, my little sister. It's my baby. Aww. What's up, baby? How you doing? Thank Aww. you for helping us out, holding it down. She's on the back end Come of on. the production. We got my guy Dev in the building, yeah, Karen up, as well. So we got a full house today. It's a we family have, operation. It's a full family house. operation. Okay. Can you imagine Savon family. being like your brother? Like, just think about that. What is that like? I feel like it comes with pros and cons. <laughs> like, you're like, never... I... That's life, nigga. <laughs> yeah, Everything comes with pros and cons. <laughs> Not just being my sibling. No, no Savon's no. probably a great brother, though. Like, yeah. On some real shit, yeah. Yeah, nah, he'll, he's definitely gonna make sure you eat. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I like it, yeah, though. Yeah, but, 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 I, just, I didn't like it, yeah, just, though. But no, you are. You're gonna guide them. Yep. They're gonna make sure that they're gonna eat. Yeah. They never gonna want for nothing. They gonna exactly. breathe air. Now the way he might teach them certain things. <laughs> yeah, it might be a little intense. <laughs> might be a little aggressive. I don't know about family and save on soft spot though. Yeah. So true. the way that he speaks okay. to them is probably different. And, it might be a little dog. unconventional. I'll say, I'll, 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 unconventional is what I'll use. It's a little yeah. unconventional, but yeah. I think it works. I, I I think it does too. I, I don't think any have any beefs with you. Otherwise, she probably yeah. wouldn't be working with us. That's <laughs> true. That's just, she probably that's just a wouldn't lot. be working with us. That's Welcome to the team. Yeah, so that's shout out lot. to my sister. Thank you for being with us. Uh, but yeah, we got a ton to get into today. Yeah, man. I, I do know. Um, I do want to also just show some love to our folks over at Underdog Fantasy. Yeah, yeah. All right, shout out to Underdog Fantasy. Those are our people. It is football season. Y'all already know. Yeah. It is time to get this sh money, as the kids say. <laughs> Telling We're going to be talking about the kids a lot today. Yeah, Drake, we are. Catering for sure. to kids. Whoa. Uh, kids, adults. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. Everybody. Kids and adults. A little bit of everything. It's a mix. Okay. Everybody's We're talking okay. about a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For but sure. with that being said, yeah. week six of the NFL season is here, and there is no better way to get in on the action than underdog fantasy. All right? Underdog Fantasy will match your first deposit up to $100. If you click in the description and sign up using the code need to know, that is free money and there's nothing we love more than free money. Mm. How are you feeling about that, Alex? Oh, man, let me tell you. We also love Underdog Fantasy over here because they dish out promos on the regular. Come on. And that's in the form of their pick'em specials, all right? This week, they are asking if you think Patrick Mahomes will have higher than 0.5 total yards when the Chiefs face the Broncos on Thursday night. <laughs> the Broncos. Knowing Patty's track record, this feels like a no-brainer. All right, so uh, we would say take the higher. Mm -hmm. we, we Remember, the guys, higher. that's Underdog Fantasy. Click the link in the description and sign up with promo code Need to Know for a first deposit matchup of a hundred dollars. Come on, man. Yes, indeed. Everybody Again, knows. that code is Need to Know Underdog Fantasy. They have an app. They have a desktop website version. Yeah. Go over there. Type in a code. Let them know who sent you. Mm -hmm. Because again, this is an easy one too. Patrick Mahomes. They saying already he's one of the top five greatest quarterbacks to ever do it so one yard is yeah. nothing yeah. um and they match your deposit so if you got a hundred like like, yeah, they, 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 they match that so Don't please that money, i've been having a ton of success i've been having a lot of fun over on underdog we fantasy know, Savon. i've been doing my thing i'm not gonna been lie doing thing. He's been doing his thing like there's not just one hit boy in the industry <laughs> Come niggas on, this hit two crazy. over here bro like, how I long have really... you been waiting to use that <laughs> nah, <laughs> get that shit off. it's the tito's i ain't gonna lie it's the tito's but no for real like underdog fantasy sign up use need to know um and again i know a lot of y'all want to show love and support us and so yeah. if mm -hmm. there is one other way for you to do that please again just go sign up using the code need to know absolutely that's one right? of the best ways to do it yeah and the NFL season has been pretty exciting so far so yes. make sure you guys and you know 
And, and particularly in. this week, like if you're listening on this Thursday yeah. uh, that we drop Wednesday, whenever you listen to the pod, right. um, Thursday night game, Patrick Mahomes, I don't think there's a sure bet of him throwing more than one yard. Oh, absolutely. Wait, that's a bet? That's it. One, that's yard? Just one yard? One yard. Yeah, just one yard. One little yard. That's it. Need to know. Why not? Guys, guys, sign up, please. Girl, sign up. Like, that's it. <laughs> one little yard. And they throw need get to know on it. Get that $100. Facts. Go get that. Um, Come on, man. But yeah, I mean, we kind of know where we want to begin. Oh, that's for sure. Yes, I think um, we kind of know where we want to begin. Reggie, the go biggest for it. story. Let's do it. Of the yeah. week, Jason Derulo was accused of <laughs> sexual assault. <laughs> yeah. That was big. Yo. That was big. Okay, we're not laughing at that. We're laughing <laughs> was, at you know. Shout obviously out to straight. Jason, man. But you know, was, it's he was accused. News. He denied it. Let's see where it develops. But anyway, joke Jason. aside, let's go. What, let's what are we it. talking about today, guys? Jason. The boy. <laughs> The so, boy. Oh, it's, it's almost been a week at the time of us recording and releasing this episode. It's almost been a week mm-hmm. I will since say. Drake has dropped for all the dogs. Yeah. That is Fat D. F A T D. Fat D has dropped. <laughs> Don't Fat. call it that. Fat D is crazy. You would get that acronym. That's huh? crazy. That's what it's called. <laughs> no, no, F A T. But no one, no one <laughs> says that, Savon. You no. know how many times I've seen that acronym on the internet? And, and never said it. I thought it, it, that it was way. a marketing you, play. <laughs> fat D. Really? No. You ain't bought that I, Fat D? I never connected it the way you just did. Savon's brain goes. He's like, that's Fat D. I mean, we're like, what? Y'all didn't put the Fat D in your life. But technically, it's no. Yeah, what? Yo, this is going Think about it. I saw that abbreviation dozens of times. And still, the way you said it didn't pop up in my brain. And te- I, technically, I it, technically it would be fine. I thought it was a marketing play because, you know, we got to give the greats their respects. He's one of the greats. So I knew it had to be some meaning behind it. Maybe he was telling you what he's working with. Yeah. I don't know what's the meaning with all the, like, but you know what, though? fat D. Like, it's funny, though, because I, I kind of do want to start there. When you talk about like words, D? no. <laughs> Actually, okay, let me be very clear. I told you, Alex to get will into. not be discussing any fat D today. <laughs> okay. Bro, we're all talking about Before, fat D. Don't uh, do that. No, I, are we not talking I, about I, for all the dogs? I don't know what that means. The way you saying it, <laughs> are we speaking of <laughs> all the dogs <laughs> for all the dogs? The way you saying it, my brain don't interpret it like it, that. It's not computing. It's this not is a yes yeah, P. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I did kind of want to stay on titles and stuff like that okay. because. Okay. You know, we've actually had the name of the album for weeks now, probably even months, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. For all the dogs, for all the dogs, for mm-hmm. all the dogs. And I'm kind of confused, <laughs> not not with the artistry of the music of Drake, I'm confused with everybody else. Because I do think that we in, our interpretation of what we thought was completely off. Like what? What do you mean? I think when people saw Fall the Dogs, and maybe this is why the discourse started, right? We started to see a lot of conversations about, yo, Drake needs a rap album before he retires. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that discourse started a little bit after her loss. And I feel like it really got heightened. Even we, before. Even before, right? Even and before. I feel like yeah. he, I might be wrong, but I feel like he even said something like that. Like, oh, I'm going to make my graceful exit. Was that him? He did say and that. And that's why we're thinking this. Yeah. Like, oh my God, is this yeah. his last album? That was during yeah. his interview with Yachty. Yeah, yeah, okay. when they were on the beach yeah, chilling. Yeah. His man. We're yeah. going to get into Yachty today. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, he told his man Yachty that back then. And I do feel like when we heard, well, I won't say we, because I knew exactly what he meant. <laughs> I think when most people were heard for the for all the dogs, he's gonna get that grungy shit. Mm. He's yeah. gonna get that boom bap shit. I thought that too. Yeah. He's gonna get that rap shit. But I, I was like, what has Drake shown us in the last several releases, in the last several months that mentally, that is where he's at. What? Mm. Let's go back to his uh, certified lover boy. Okay. I feel like that should have been our clear indication right there. We thought it was gonna be like a you know a prophetic love album, mm. right? Like when you hear the title. Certified Lover Boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. When the album came out, and I, I'm on record saying this, and I will say it again, I hate that album. <gasps> hate, I hate Certified Lover Boys. I haven't visited it today. Yeah. There's a lot of amazing songs on there, Alex, though. <sighs> right, there so, really is. Like, so I'm look, glad you gave him that pushback. Yeah. Like, and well, I you don't, hate I don't, the album? I, I, we could go through it, but the best song on there by far for me, and you know what, too? There was a lot of leaked songs that made that album. Yes. Like a lot of the leaked songs that we had. Oh, so it didn't wow you? I don't think it wowed me. So I I think probably that played a part, right? Mm -hmm. But I will say Pipe Down. Yeah, yeah, that's is, a nice song. Is by far one of the one of the Drake's one of the best Drake songs I've heard. Period. I'm gonna be yeah, honest with you. Yeah. I put pipe down up there. Let me ask you a the question. The world yeah. is yours, but what? the city's mine. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Not to interrupt, but why do you think? Why is it that Drake's albums or tracks on his albums usually like they take a while to hit? In the sense of like, oh, like you, it'll like mm-hmm. come out today, for instance, and then like next month. If you revisit it, you'll be like, oh, wow, Like this is actually tough. That's not a bad thing because Drake's albums age beautifully. And I mm-hmm. feel like that's a good thing, like rather than it that. being like you play it once and you have your full opinion. No, like yeah. sit with it like a regular person for a month. Like, yeah. I, and I do feel like when we did get to hear Certified Lover Boy, 
after all of our assumptions or what we thought it was going to be, we would have all went, oh, okay. He's, mm. he's doing the opposite day thing. Mm. I thought that was the clear indication of what like we should expect from Drake going forward. Like Meaning, hey, whatever we think it's going to be, okay, yeah. it's not going to be. Okay. okay. Because when we got started to fight Loverboy, though he does talk about women, bro, he always talks about women. But it didn't feel like that. Some people were even predicting it was going to be an R&B album, mm-hmm. just off of the title. So back to the title with For All The Dogs, I clearly knew up front he meant, yo... <laughs> women been calling me dogs. I'm gonna get into that doggy mm-hmm. bag. Like being a dog with women, being a dog with how I value my time in relationships, being a dog with how I see, you know, toxicity or what's not toxic, or honestly what he's accepting now, right? Yeah. So I, I felt like I saw a lot of discourse on that, and that confused me because I was like, what has he done recently that was making us feel like we was about to get a like something different, a full rap, and then we coming off of her loss. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He got into a little rap <clears throat> on there, but for the most part, we discuss women. I mean, it's called her loss. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, if you just see the trend of recent things that he's put out, I have no idea why there was a hand, there was a handful of people that were expecting a certain Drake. I just, I'm still a little puzzled by that. Yeah, I don't know if I <laughs> have that puzzled. answer either. Yeah. Because when I first saw Fat D, I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> maybe the shit is going to be a little eclectic. Yeah. You know, I ain't like, bumped that out. What? You, we, bro, that's what we're talking about. I ain't about. play that shit. You <laughs> have to under- You got a different version. No, my we shit, got the same my version, shit say bro. That. You like, got the version where his son drew that shit on the cover? Yeah, same, you sure? same version. I right, promise you, it's, it's it all the, right there. It was in the same language and all? He was in the same language? Yeah, it was in the same. The same? Yeah. When I didn't know what to expect, <clears throat> and I think it goes back to what you said with Drake. Like Drake yeah. is misdirection king. Yeah. He's on tour right now. He got a lot going on. So I, I think that's why I kind of wanted to start. Right. So what you said was a great point because for whatever reason, it doesn't seem like Drake has kept a theme on a rollout that we assume like, right for off the title. And, and he doesn't really yeah. ever explain. He doesn't give us much explanation. Like going back to CLB. Yeah. Right? I know we're talking about for all the dogs, but CLB um he did the emoji thing with all yeah. the pregnant, pregnant. women, yeah. right? Mm. right? What is the message? What's the correlation between <laughs> that album cover, the music, um, I cannot the title. believe that is the album cover. Like, still to this day, I saw that shit. I was like, wow, that it's really legit. happened. Yeah, like, it's legit. The yeah. al- like, but he, so I don't really understand the correlation between that. Certified Lover Boy doesn't really show much correlation between the pregnant emoji yeah. and then going to the music that doesn't really match the tone of anything. Um, academics made a point, or, or Joe, one of these guys made a point where he's making playlist type music where he's just putting a collections of songs mm-hmm. and it's like, let me pick a song that I really like that goes on this playlist. So I don't really know the theme behind For All The Dogs. I don't. I didn't understand that part. Mm-hmm. But I didn't expect the all full rap album because he gave no indication of yeah. that. Yeah. Um, that was just us I, saying that. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I think it's know. also who he's talked or who he confides in when it comes to like playlisting his albums or putting... The tracks on his albums. Well, it's, not, albums. it's not just him. Yeah, it's not just him. I do kind of want to get to that. I don't know if I want to get to that just yet, but yeah, yeah. I, I did want to start with just that because... Like the title? Yeah, and our expectations. And our expectations, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because I totally get like a lot of the... Maybe we should get into the album first. Right? Let's do it. Right, let's 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 start with I, you, let's I start just, with likes and dislikes. Let's start yeah. with the likes and let's start with the dislikes. I have very specific likes. I want to hear. And it. I feel like a lot of people have said this, but whatever, I agree. My favorite moments on the album were not necessarily Drake. When I heard Tizo touchdown, yes. his vocals, he sounded. And I hate to do the comparing game, but like I literally left the apartment and came back <laughs> like a, like a few hours later, and the song was playing. He really does sound like uh, Ty Dolla Sign on it. Which is the compliment. Sounds, so I love Tito, Tito Touchdown. I'm really happy for him. This is an amazing look. Yeah. He had one shot and, and he, he really nailed capitalized. it. So congratulations. Yeah. And also, obviously, J. Cole's verse. I re listened to it. I. I feel like that really is the best moment on the album. Really? Like, and I feel like I'm biased wow. because he's really my favorite. Say, yeah. You're talking about first, person, first I'm biased. Person shooter. I'm biased. Yeah. No, she's not. She's legit. Oh, okay, that's, okay, a, okay. that's a he. He's the no, highlight. He he's the yeah, standout yeah. on the album. For yeah. Me. yeah, like that's a really moment. Crazy. It was a moment. Like it was a. Moment. It was a moment. Like really? yes, that's, this is the one song that I think will stand the test yeah. of time. Mm-hmm. That's, and, and, and I, I, I want to say like I don't think I'm not on like the oh my god Drake didn't even do much on his album. I'm not with that opinion. I don't hate the album. I I think like the song sound. Good. Like, I yeah. think the song sounds fine, and but definitely J. Cole yeah. was, like, the wow moment on And just album. for reference, that's track six, first person shooter. Oh, yeah, sorry, first person shooter. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. Why, like, you guys disagree? No, I, I I agree with you. I think, I like when we get to see the big really? three interact with each other. Like, even when, I, I remember a few months ago, 
when I, I want to say it was probably the first time we really saw Drake and J. Cole start hanging out. They took a picture in the car or some shit. Y'all remember, oh, yeah, remember that? And it was on Instagram what? and people were so hyped to just see Drake and J. Cole you together. You mean like back then? Yeah, or, yeah, oh, yeah maybe yeah, a few yeah. years ago. It was just yeah, a picture wild, of them in a the car and everybody was hyped. Mm -hmm. It was no music that came out. They hadn't worked since like mm -hmm. uh, in the morning. It was just them together. So whenever we see any combination of that big mm -hmm. three, which we haven't really seen Ken Kendrick a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you have thoughts on Kendrick like kind of Oh. Separating himself from those two. I have so many thoughts. Um, it's something I've definitely noticed. <laughs> but I agree with Reggie. I think J. Cole was a standout. And he came correct. Like, I know this has been said. I know, you know, all of the big dogs, as far as the media personalities and moguls, the Joes, the Charlemagnes, the Ebros, everybody's covered this. So what we're going to say may not be new. But the facts is the facts. Like, J. Cole showed out. Mm -hmm. He came like, I am on the track with the nigga that everybody says is the best, but I feel like I'm the best and I'm going to rap like it. And I heard on, um, because you know Drake does the, the radio shows before his releases now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's it called? Something 42? Yes. Uh, as on Sound 42. On Sound 42. Yeah, Sound yeah. 42 is a channel at Sirius. And um, yeah, he had a, a conversation called A Seat at the Table pre-release. Yeah. And he mentioned that First Person Shooter was the last song recorded. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, you could tell. Like, like, oh, it feels especially, like it. especially yeah. because the ending line, he's like, "I'm one record away from beating uh, uh, Michael, Michael Jackson's jo record." Yeah. So, and you wouldn't know that until like a few weeks ago. So yeah. it was clear that he just recently recorded it. Drake did. Has everybody in here heard uh, the Joe to back freestyle with Drake yes. and J Cole from yeah. years back? Mm -hmm. I know that's really our era, yeah. and I do, you know, incline you guys to go listen to it if you guys haven't heard it. Man, when I saw the two of them on the track list together. That is the first thing my brain went back to. Because it's album time, it's two spitters, and if you listen to that Jodeci freestyle, it's the both of them. Yeah. You know how we sitting up here just kind of like praising more Cole and Drake right now? Mm -hmm. It wasn't none of that on that record. It was the two of them going no, like just wowing, like mm -hmm. prolific. Mm -hmm. Balls giving you everything you wanted. So, you know, I guess that's probably the one expectation an assumption that I did have when yeah. I at least saw the track list. Mm -hmm. So when I did hear how Cole just did that and then Drake just hopped on the, on the beat switch, mm -hmm. I was like, damn, son, like, I could have really been something, you know? And I will say this, though. I don't think it's just that uh, feature, right? When I hear Hove on a lot of Drake's, like, the last Hove verse that really got me on the Drake project was Pound cake. Pound cake. Right? Even yeah, the joint he did yeah, on yeah, Certified yeah. Lover Boy, like, eh. it was cool. Eh. Right? It was eh. very forgettable. It's very forget like it's forget forgettable. Like, you forget Pound cake is legendary. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Those saying? two should never have a forgettable song. That, and that's what I'm saying, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So it kind of brought me to that when I saw, you know, the performance that was both done by the both of them. I was like, yeah. damn, I thought the both of them was going to chop. Yeah. And I was saying, now, I don't know why that is. I didn't, I didn't, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like the fact that Cole was like, yo, it's the Spider Man, me, me versus, <laughs> like, <laughs> I get that. I'm not. I'm not mad at wait, that. Wait, wait, wait. You don't because like they the still trying to keep it friendly. Like it was fly. Like the line was, it was okay. fly. Okay. Okay. Shit I get off. it. I was just saying in terms of, like, I liked. I liked when Kendrick got on control, which wasn't a song of his, mm -hmm. but felt cool enough to be like, yeah, you know, Sean, I'm I fuck with you. you. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I could come at you but niggas wanna, on some yeah. respect but they shit on the it, same they song. They both did it in a in a very yeah. tasteful, yeah, buddy buddy kind of way. Like J Cole said, "I'm the goat." Yeah. And then Drake came back and said, I'm the go. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, but he's the go and yeah. I'm the go. Yeah. So we the go. We're the Spider Man like, meme looking they, at each other. They did yeah, it in yeah. a very nice, yeah. you know what and I'm it, saying? And it worked. Kind of it's, way. It's going to debut at number one on the Billboard yeah. charts. And that's yeah. what you do when you got a lot work. of money and there's only one nigga that right. you could look at and say, oh, I kind of relate yeah. to you a little bit. And, yeah. you know, biracial bandits, like they got a connection <laughs> and shit. Like, I get that. Like, legit, they got so a lot in common for real. But. Yeah. I the the reason that I really in, in, enjoyed that verse is yeah. because I just like seeing again that type of energy. Right. I do think Drake probably could have came, and let me not say he could have came a little bit hard. Like that's that whoa, that hey. sounds crazy. Pause okay. that shit. No pause. Fast nah, forward. you you been you talking, talking fat, fat D all Nah, but came along. You came along. Nah, 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 came nah, 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 when he want to draw the line. <laughs> and I do believe <laughs> not fat D though that it could have been a little bit more competitive on there. But it, I think yeah. it was a great. I, I think it was a great song, like Reggie said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that this is probably the standout song, and I also believe that it did great for J Cole. I think people sure. are seeing oh, yeah. J Cole sure. in a different nothing light. Nothing but praise. Yeah. Nothing, nothing but praise. praise respect. Yeah. He doesn't have the accolades that Drake does, but nobody does. Spe Who does? Speaking of accolades, what surprised me? I didn't know J Cole never had a number one. 
That is blasphemy. Billboard, I didn't know that either. Billboard, my numbers don't matter. One. I didn't know that up until the, like yeah. when people were you know saying hey. First person shooter is, is is projected to debut at number one on the Billboard yeah. chart, which would give J. Cole his first first number one. I was confused. So mm -hmm. yeah, salute to Qu him on that. Qu for question sure. for you: What yeah. it, when yeah, you guys were listening to for doing that? Say, um, one don't have his, his headphones. That, on. That, Wait, you say, Pierre? Wait, Pierre says, quick, quick, quick question. Quick yeah. question. Uh -huh. When you guys were listening to it, were your ears telling you that they were standing toe to toe? No. Nah. Or, or do you think when I was listening to it, and this goes to my conversation. Uh, again, referencing our Patreon, we just had a gonna, very I know you're gonna say the studio thorough. Thing. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. we had a very <laughs> thorough, in-depth conversation yeah. about the quality of music, um, the decline in music. Which also Juicy J came to, came out and said this past week how the the music uh, industry rap. is almost on the, the sales decline. are rap. really low. Rap yeah, is rap, down forty. Rap. Yep, rap is down forty percent according to Juicy wow. J. But um, when listening to this and knowing that this was the last song that was recorded on the album, knowing that uh, he and J. Cole were in the studio together yeah. when they recorded this, it made me go back to our conversation on Patreon about the authenticity within music and how when rappers are actually in the studio together, when artists are actually creating the music together and not just sending and MP3s collaborating. and sending tracks, it will increase... The energy the and the quality and the chemistry of the song. Yeah. I agree. If we had to do a podcast and Alex and Reggie sent me the stems <laughs> and just said, yo, I want yo. you to reply on the dead air. That makes no sense. Yo, yo, yo say Vaughn, I left it open right here. You see, like, it's just different. Like, like, wait, what? You know what? Maybe that's an extreme example yeah, because extreme. nobody's going to do that. Hyperbole. But like, I'm going to put it to y'all like this. That would be fucking weird. We could <laughs> oh, easily... We could easily, in every single creator, content creator, podcaster, they could all take this method of continuing to sit on Zoom and create a podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know one of the reasons why we don't do a Zoom podcast? It would be fucking terrible. Like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, exactly. She would be, she would be like, asked. I would hate doing that, guys. <laughs> Imagine yeah. every single Tuesday. Instead, yeah. we actually try to make the commute. We mm -hmm. carve out the time. Right. Yes. We pay the studio fees. Mm -hmm. We invest and in being we, here together. And before we record, we have a little banter. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. It's That's just a, a creative wow. process. It's a creative juice. It's a workflow right. that just creates a better product within media, within podcasting. And so with music, you can feel it and hear it too. Yeah. I think that's another reason why that song is one of the standouts because they were together and because they are, it's like steel sharpening steel. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's I like. That's a very good way to put it because, you know, it's good when you can have steel to actually properly critique you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess one thing I wanted to ask you before I really got into, you know, first listens and how y'all feel about it overall because I did want to stay with Cole a little bit. Yep. Um, who did Cole give the better feature to? Was it Yachty or was it Drake? That's a great question. Drake. Oh. Yeah. Really? I, I, think, I would say Drake. Um, I think he gave it to Yachty. I think Yachty showed off his... Damn, I don't know. Because right? I was about to say Yachty showed off his like actual bars, like rapping ability, and then the Drake song was a bigger moment. Right. But I don't know because he really barred it up on Drake's song too. I don't I, know. I, I like love, both. My, my favorite um, part on Drake, on, on the feature he gave Drake was when he switched that Switch flow flows. on that second ah. verse. Murder. Yes. Crazy. Crazy. Murder. Wicked. <laughs> but <laughs> as I'm listening to, y'all remember how the internet was going crazy when he dropped the Yachty feat? Like everybody, yeah. Yeah. I heard I heard Ish say on the Joe Budden podcast this is the best feature he's heard since uh jay-z Jay z's god <laughs> did what Damn. like i heard people say like nah that verse was different like out of all yeah. the you remember when nala was here i was just asking nala about all of the j cole verses mm -hmm. and it felt like when that one came out there was a clear separation like they did yeah. appreciate everything that came out mm -hmm. but that one really stuck with them for me i was like did cole just give and verse it was a year <laughs> to johnny and why it, not <laughs> I know, but it's like, why? but he really did show up for Drake, though. That's why I don't want to take oh, yeah, anything yeah, yeah. from that performance, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? But just from what he gave Yachty, I don't know, man. I got, I think personally, I got to go with the Yachty. I'm not one. mad either way. Yeah. That's fine, yeah. But yeah. I, I, I have to correct you, and this is going to lead me to another song on yeah. Drake's album. Yeah. But the person that's given out verses of the year, I think the MVP of features this year has easily. Been SZA. I, was, oh, I knew yeah. you was about to say that. Yeah, SZA She's a star. is on the J. Cole feature run where every time yeah. she is on a fucking song, she I want to fast forward to hear yeah. her voice. Like she has the best part on yeah. the song. To hear like, her melodies, yeah. to hear her cadence. Yep. She has had an all-star, superstar, MVP type year mm -hmm. when it's come to features. Yeah. 
And like we mentioned with Cole, yeah. I want to make sure that we highlight and show her love yeah. because Absolutely. I think she did it on Drake's album. Yeah. Uh, she definitely on Travis Scott's album. She is the only listenable verse on his whole album. <laughs> so it is just Travis Scott. I can I could come out. It's funny you said I can come out and say right now that I do like for all the dogs more than Utopia. Oh, that's for sure. Oh yeah, I think we all. That's not that's not that's not that's not yo, you thought you ate with that? <laughs> no, yo, you thought you Don't ate with that. Don't say that. that. <laughs> Nobody thought you were oh, so He's like, no, I was like, guys. Dude, bro, I'm actually kind of relieved. Are you crazy? I'm kind of relieved. I ain't going for I'm kind of relieved that y'all feel that way. I do feel like there are people that really feel like that album stuck <laughs> or meant something. What would you rather, legit, what would you rather listen yeah. to? Utopia yeah. or Fat D? Like if you really got in your car, what are you bumping? I'm Drake's, not going for. I never, I never had no shit in my phone call Fat D. <laughs> I don't know which version you downloaded from. You sure you got the? I Apple mean, this store? is not that much of a surprise because we all have pretty much been on the same page with Utopia yeah. and yeah. Fat D. So. That's yeah. <laughs> no, we have not. You have to have the whole. If it's one thing, Reggie, right, speak D's. for yourself. Uh, uh, she's speaking yeah. for us. She's speaking for us. No, nah, it's yeah. two on three. That means you got to conform. <laughs> but no, I think SZA yeah. should get the praise yeah. for and the way she comes everything. in. Like everything. she's an expert at the way. Like notice how she comes in. Yeah. Like it's so smooth. Like it, her part. It's always like she always changes the her, mood. Yes, she changes yes. the mood <laughs> and she changes the style in which she sings yeah. mid verse. Mm. Every feature. I think the most. I think the Jersey most. Jersey finest. That's a Jer Jersey. I was, just, I was just about to wait until you stop yeah. talking so I can be like, "That's the Jersey Queen right there." <laughs> I think the most impressive part about her verses is she makes like <laughs> frying men up sounds so beautiful. <laughs> That's that, that was the appeal. She like, makes it sound from so control. Like yo, yeah. she makes it very relatable and real. Like the things that she says were like, oh, Bro, yeah. they're not like the typical lyrics. Yo, she made third... me hate all my exes. <laughs> I'd be like, damn, you speaking for them. Like what, bro? Why you did that? Her, her third bar on Slime You Out was, yo, that dick not even third place. That's tough. I think. <laughs> like, did anybody hear that That's shit? She, yeah, you didn't even hear it because it was That's so beautiful. Tough. I know. <laughs> she, said to me? She, she was like, she Wait, said, what she said to me? She, she said, yo, save on a dick not even third place. Not even damn. third place. <laughs> she made it sound so beautiful, though. I was like, damn, mm -hmm. why? Where did her album chart? Yo, I, I don't know, but please look that up if you can. Okay. I, that's a very good question. I'm not sure. It kind of reminds me. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of this one, this one lyric that will forever haunt me. And <laughs> thankfully, I've never like been told this. But it's something that I've felt before. You're about to go crazy. And this will lead us to another conversation on Fat D, which is Rihanna. But you remember when oh Rihanna God. said you were just another nigga on my hit list? Yeah. Hey. Bro, when I tell you I've had nightmares <laughs> about that one yeah. line alone. But you, that bar, because yeah. I felt like just that before. Yeah. So like, the way am I? I Yes, like was I really like just they, another like, nigga on your hit? Like they even in the I played nothing to you. Like that's crazy to me. Hey, you guys do that to girls all the time. I was just know? about to say that shit though. Like when they speak like, she like was just that, just another one. But yeah, it feels like not do it. It feels oh like they even in the that's, the that's the duality. <laughs> That's, the That's hard. <laughs> anyway, oh my let's God, talk about Rihanna. So, yeah. Wait, wait, well, wait. Before we get to Rihanna, because okay, yeah, we're yeah. kind of rushing through this. I kind of want to get you guys, what y'all feel about the album first. That, That's track four. Okay. Like, did you guys have any expectations going into it, though? I just, I just was excited to hear yeah. it. And I don't know if... Okay. Mm. I think the discourse around it, you guys are so <laughs> dramatic. Like, please, <laughs> can we just... Can we... <laughs> Guys, I'm not talking about the reviews, like the whole Joe Budden and the and the back and forth. I'm not talking about that because yeah. that was a moment in its own. Like, but I feel like the Twitter opinions, people are like, oh my God, Drake is losing it. He's a misogynist. He's an incel. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Like, like I was like, this is so dramatic. I no, do that. you guys think so or no? no? I like, I was like, that. what is yeah. going on? Can I, we just like yeah. listen to it? For like, me, I don't think it's like his best album. Mm -hmm. But I also don't think we're witnessing like the downfall of Drake. I I, I don't like. I think it well, sounds fine. The numbers like, say this is the downfall, or I, he's on the okay. decline. The really? numbers, really? just based off first week numbers. Mm -hmm. um, this Didn't one is have... projected at four hundred and fifty, and his previous ones were at six hundred plus, seven hundred plus, eight. Like at the so, first this week. has been one of his lower performing first week. Sales, if you use that as a metric, um, he didn't do bundles like a Travis Scott. I was about so, to say, yeah, got to take everything with a grain of salt. Yeah, but I like that. I don't dislike. Like, I like the album. I don't dislike yeah. the album. Um, as somebody who has the the luxury of growing with Drake, like our generation, our era, our age group, anybody between the ages of, I want to say twenty six to about thirty five, thirty seven, Drake's age, right? So let's say forty. We got to grow with Drake, but I like think literally. So it, legit. So 
I don't think this is the worst sounding project at all. I do understand the the sentiment of wanting to hear a more evolved version of Drake. Yeah. yeah. Like when I was listening to this album, I heard no inspiration. I didn't I didn't I don't feel like he was inspired while making this. I feel like he just kind of recreated a lot of his other songs, old songs, old flows, old topics. Um, but I don't think it was bad. And I think before we even, you know, go in into some of the further things in it, what I noticed, and I haven't heard this, it sounds like Drake keeps trying to win Instagram. <laughs> Every okay. single okay, song, yes. I can see that. he's trying to create a lyric, a verse, a catchy, a catchphrase, a one-liner that you yeah. can post on your Instagram. And I think he's, he's become, no. I know, even, even from what he he's posts. always done it, but I think it's been natural, organic, authentic. I don't think it was as uh, intentional or strategic. Mm -hmm. This album, it feels more like evident was, than ever. Yeah, yeah, he's to out where to it's do it. Almost yeah, yeah. cringy at times. Mm. Chardine, Yo. Claudine, Claudine, <laughs> yeah. Catherine, and he did Jamie. that on the joint with Cole. Shut the fuck up, Dean. Like <laughs> that <laughs> shit is like it just felt very Instagram. Mm -hmm. Let me chase those yeah. kind of quotes and mm -hmm. moments. I'm not mad at that though because although like, I fully agree he does do that, but mm. also he's the king of that, and also like. Clearly, clearly, it has worked out for him. Yeah. Like that is his formula, and he does it, and it works out for him every single time. I, so I'm kind of like, who are we to be like, yo, like you're overdoing it, you're doing it too much now. That that chapter's over. Like yeah. it's not. Like you know what I'm saying. So I, yeah, yeah, I don't sure. know. I, I get what you're saying, but I'm also like, it works for him, and we're gonna we're gonna be replaying these songs anyway. I don't think we give Drake enough credit for being intentional in that sense. Because listen, like if I'm if I'm Drake, right? And I want my my songs to do numbers or, or my album to really you know chart high. I would want to do things where most people are at, like most people around our most of his demographic is on Instagram for the most part, right? Yeah. And then even going into a little bit of what Joe said, Joe when uh, Joe was mentioning how he's around the younger crowd, um, even when when Ak was doing the review on his album. You know, um, Drake mentioned that mentioned the act that he would hop on live and and speak to him and, uh, with his audience, and he wound up not really doing that. But he did call into Kai's live, and as most of you might know, Kai is the world's um, uh, 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 the the he, the the he had the most streams, most live, most people on the stream, um, and Kai has you know most younger of most Kai's demographic is is. Uh, mostly younger crowd of the young crowd so him wanting to post or you know say things that are instagrammable or, or have those quotables i think that's a marketing scheme that he's you know wanting to do <sighs> am i wrong for thinking it's, that? i don't think you're wrong I, I i feel so split about all of this i gotta be honest with you because i'll I, same yeah, yeah, yeah right because i'll go back to the top of what kind of album did y'all think yeah i don't know what the expectations i don't know what indicators thought I don't know what they what they got that they thought they was getting a mature album. <laughs> I, I, I think that, but see, why I'm also split it's is because, because that would have been I, right. Yes. Not, right. I could. <laughs> I kind of expect people like the Drakes, the Kendricks, and the J. Coles to push the sound mm -hmm. to take it to another to set level. The tone. To set the tone, yeah. right? Like, and then everybody else, all the subgenres under them, kind of figure out their way around it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what's funny? I thought about Kendrick Lamar's album, and me too. I'm a t right, really right. No, I did. <laughs> he don't fuck with these niggas. Yo, he don't. We're gonna get to that. What I thought about was how it's not just Drake that's realizing that they have to appeal to some of the younger kids. Mm -hmm. Kendrick Lamar also used Kodak Black the way Drake used a Tizo touchdown, kind of sprinkled over the album. But see, I think what made Kendrick's album a little different was people did get that maturity from Kendrick they were looking for. Right, he was talking about. Growing up with a with an aunt that identified as a man, like he got into fatherhood a lot in his head and his relationship with his father and how it affected him, right? So even though they were kind of getting that new sound bounce with Kodak on it, they still the other crowd was also still getting fed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But for me, I don't know. It's it's difficult because how do you? I've always accepted people for who they are. Okay. Okay. I think true change comes from self. And it can be difficult to change when, see, a lot of people are, are talking about Yachty. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the 100 people I always see Drake with. That's a constant energy swap, yo. Yeah. 
a constant energy transfer, fam. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I think it could be hard when you're moving with that many people around you to even think clearly about what you want to do, right? Like, even people are saying, like, yo, I blame Yachty. Yeah, but even Drake has to be the one to go, yo, I ain't going front. I'm putting Yachty in that position to go yeah. do that. You know what I'm saying? So it's still coming from self. Yeah. Back to the maturity thing is, why would I want Drake to talk about something or things that he's not at yet? Hmm. That's, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, no, yeah, I get you. I think that's that makes a, sense. I think that's a really difficult... Now, granted, on paper, when you hear, think about 36 and 37-year-olds, sure, most people would maybe going down the family route. Yeah. We don't even publicly know if he's dating someone seriously. Yeah. That's what I thought, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And also, so, we're like placing our expectations of a 37-year-old man once, on him. And clearly, he's not the typical... 37 year old man and yeah. trust me I like the mature shit like right. my favorite rapper is J. Cole so clearly like I am I like the growth Yes. but also like from Drake he gives us something different like he wants he's the hit maker yeah. and I just cause clearly he knows okay so p the, the people in this room right now we're all around the same age of mm -hmm. course we want that like maturity but we're not his only audience. Yeah. Facts. And, and this is why he's the number one star in the world because yeah. he knows how to appeal to us and appeal to the hit makers and yeah. sell out shows, appeal yeah. to the kids. So I don't know, like, what are we really asking for? Well, like, I, I, <clears throat> To your point when it comes to Drake, so we, we don't need to know, like, if mm -hmm. he's intimate with anybody. We don't need to know who he's dating. Mm -hmm. And cool, if he offers that, great. But I think there's certain nuances or certain aspects of his life that we do know for sure which is fatherhood, right? Which is co-parenting, which is, you know, we know that you've had relationships. So instead of subliminally dissing Rihanna, why not talk about how <laughs> that breakup or how that person made you feel? Yeah. You're gonna, like, instead of like dissing instead her. Instead of like, shading her. Yeah, or while being, she's happy with two children and Aesop. Like, exactly. Like, you look it, it crazy. Was, it was, like, it was that, definitely that, out that of one point, I will say, like, I was like, I feel like that wasn't done well because it's one thing if we know you guys are having a back and forth and you address her on the album. That's cool because we're like, oh my God, like, let's tune in and see what he says. Yeah. But Rihanna's out here happy in Barbados with her man, with her two kids, just happy. <laughs> and you're sitting here like, Salty. I feel like that part looked crazy. No, like you fumbled like, a billionaire. Like this does <laughs> you not look like you fumbled a billionaire. Her, trash was, I, uh, her sex was average. No one believes that, yo. Like that it, was crazy to me. Like, and even if it is average, I don't need you to be the messenger of why her sex or who she is or anything about her is average. Especially, it's been such a long time. Yeah, you know, like they haven't been together in a very long time, and then it just shows the evolution of his his peer group, right? We see the Big Sean's, we see the J. Cole's, we see the Kendrick's, even Rihanna. All of them came out, came and, and found stardom around the same time. Yeah. And all of them, we that's see a, evolution. That's a good point. Whereas yeah. Drake, we just see time passing. But I don't see evolution. But, I just see him but, staying as a different or same version of himself as the years go on. But we, we heard about the struggles with his mom on older albums. We heard about his son on Scorpion, right? Did we? We did. Did yeah. we? Did we? we really yeah. Know? yeah. March, March 14th. March 14th was literally entitled to him. You feel what I'm saying? Okay, and, but he yeah. was bullied into doing that. I mean, even if he was, he provided it, right? Then, he could have literally bullied been bullied. Is, he could have literally been bullied and just never brought... He had Adonis on his album. Yeah. I mean, what if, does that do, though? I that mean, doesn't I mean, give vulnerability. That doesn't give transparency. That doesn't give evolution. I mean, it gives marketing. See, it gives... See, yes, I'm a point. dad and this is my son. But back to the point hmm. about, you know, who you're moving around with, his contemporaries in J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar, right? They look like they have some sort of a wife or stable woman figure in their life, along with multiple kids. My boy, my boy Drake living like a rich baby daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said it on the album. There's a song called Rich Baby Daddy. You know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> Back to the point is like how, so, <laughs> so I really do feel like because we've heard about him talk about his father and his mother, we've heard it all before. We yeah. kind of heard like how he came Similar, up and yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying, like his inspirations and stuff like that. So if we've gotten from him, maybe we are just looking at a mirror of his times. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't even necessarily think there's a right or a wrong. Now, back to the maturity thing. Would we would people like to see some maturity? I mean, I think it'd be refreshing. It would be, but he's done it though. That's the thing, though. Like Pete, right? Yeah. Like we know his life story. Like for he's instance, told us. Drake just told us that. Well, I, I just found this out the other day. He just bought a really big crib in Houston. 
Mm-hmm. So I heard he recently sold his LA crib. You know what I'm saying? I'm bringing all of these things up to say like, yo, we might just get that as time goes, depending on where he's at. Shit, you know, people could go in reverse, right? There was a song on this album, and I'm surprised that no one is speaking about it because I feel like it's the most important one to really understand where he's going at. And the song is called Away From Home. Yeah, I like that one. On Away From Home, he is talking about how this is really his first time feeling gangster. Yeah. Um, I heard on a serious show, like, yo, I ain't gonna lie, there's some lines on this album that are really gonna sever some relationships and ties. Fam, all that is telling me is that, yo, this is where he's at right now. When we heard mm-hmm. Scorpion, what would he, what would he, what do we hear? A bunch of Pusha T, Kanye West related friction in those raps. Yeah. We heard it. We heard it not only in his tone of voice, but also on in the bars. Yeah. So Again, if I'm just looking at from album to album, from direction to direction, it just looks like, yo, this is just what I'm going through right now. Yeah. And for, for me to hear that this is his first time of him really feeling gangster, yeah. I think he believes that. He, he said he felt like back then all of the um, top rappers or people that he reached out to, Lou Brodom, he was talking about like struggles where he remembered, dri- he remembered driving through the tunnel, uh, Lincoln Tunnel. Lincoln to, Tunnel, yeah, to, for to, a label deal. For a label deal. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, I think I agree with Alex. Like, when we're, when everybody, I feel like that has been a really, really, really big consensus. Like, oh, like, grow up. Like, obviously, mm-hmm. like, you know, you've mm-hmm. seen what's in the news. Like, but what exactly, when we say, Drake, we need the more mature bars, what exactly are we asking for? Like, <laughs> I don't you know, know if it's maturity. Right. I think it's just evolution. I don't think it's maturity. I think it's just a little bit more nuance. I think mm-hmm. it's a little bit more relatability. Um, going to my point of relatability, I think... His back and forth with Joe Budden, um, you know, the crazy thing with this is he managed to make Joe Budden be appeared by the public in a positive or correct light. Like, a lot of the conversations that I had, everybody, most people were like, yo, I agree with Joe. I hear, yeah. I, I saw understand what, like I, yeah, saw, I saw a lot of and yeah. you normally don't hear that when it comes to a Joe Budden. I also, right? I also yeah. heard like messenger and message thing too. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I heard a lot of that as well. But yeah. the sentiment wasn't, oh, fuck Joe Budden, he's a bum ass, broke ass rapper, he didn't win. Yeah. Like a lot of people didn't go with what the picture that Drake was trying to paint, which is Joe Budden is a failure, he wasn't a great rapper. He's broke. He lives in a modest home in New Jersey, and I have yeah, a jet. All that shit is crazy. Like when I read those things, and we can kind of get into that. Yeah. But when I read those things, I feel like Drake alienated a lot of folks. Yeah. I feel like it just showed me how detached he is. Yeah. From reality. Reality. <laughs> yeah. Because for you to try to use the Joe Budden is broke card in 2023, anybody in the space who's like keeping up with podcasts, keeping up with media. Again, this could be another message, right? Where it's like, maybe I shouldn't be the messager in saying this. Yeah, because yeah, they're messenger like, of course, Savon, you say Maybe this. I shouldn't be the yeah, messenger right. in saying this. Fuck it, that's the and, thing with this week, so just say it. Just, but you are the messenger. Anybody who's looking and can see and has kept up with the evolution of Joe Budden in his podcast can see he is no longer the broke Joe Budden. Yeah. He is no longer the, the punching great, bag for the rap industry of mm. saying, oh, you a crackhead, angel, dust, dusthead, whatever they want to say about him. He's no longer that. So Drake's response to me just felt like, oh, nigga, you just not tapped into anything. Yeah. And you're not tapped into how people view you, yeah. how people want to see you or how people view the people that are judging you. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you're st- still trying to put somebody who's created an actual a uh, uh, media network and conglomerate and put him down as if he's just some Joe Schmo. Now, maybe in rap, he don't got the accolades. But what I'll say to that is nobody got Drake's accolades. Well, not yeah. even Jay-Z. Yeah, not, yeah. not okay. even the Beatles. And so I- if you want to use your accolades <laughs> yeah. as a yeah. standing point, you are now isolating and alienating everybody. 99.9% was, of, rappers. of anybody who's ever touched a microphone yeah. that has rapped or has attempted to podcast. I was surprised that he went the money route. I ain't going to front. Yeah. I was a little surprised by that. I'm not surprised that he went the eloquent route because when you're dealing with a Joe Budden, That's the only your little out. shouting and yelling rants, <laughs> It's not gonna touch a brother like it. Joe. Don't work. We've been around. Joe. It won't work. Yeah, you like why? Because he's like the king of that. Yeah, it's, it, it's a certain you yeah. know. He he wax poetic. There you go. He's wax poetic. You got to have some nuance onto it. Get you know. So I could see that. I think for me, it's more like you know people that are in the sports. Even if you're not in the sports, when you watch 
Sports Center in the morning, when you watch uh, first takes in the morning, a lot of those pundits have already played the sport. True. So they were hired to speak on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's kind of similar in this thing, you know, with, with rappers kind of transitioning into the, the podcast space. I think it makes the most sense. Yeah. You know, granted, like how J- Savon was saying, we want to be very clear. We know nobody has Drake's accolades. Let me be. Let me say this: Drake don't got more. Drake, wait. Let me get it. I don't have more money than Drake. <laughs> Neither do I. I'm gonna say that right Not now. Not yet. I. What? I don't have a, a penny. A Speak dime. for yourself. Speak no, I'm kidding. No, no, no. I'm gonna say. It. I'm gonna say the right. truth. Right, right, I'm, gonna say, I'm gonna just come out and say it because I don't yet. want people to feel like we're caping or we're kind of yeah. speaking from a, a, a another perspective. Just speaking up from the perspective of just being critiqued. I highly respect seeing the Dan Olaskis talk about football. Is Dan Olaski, was he a Patrick Mahomes when he played? Do you know what he's most famous for? <laughs> yeah, I, I, Dan Olaski <laughs> is most famous for running yeah. out of bounds yeah. in his yeah. own in end, own zone, end zone, zone as a quarterback. Safety. Yeah. Because yeah. he didn't want to get sacked. Because he didn't want to get sacked. Please oh. look and, up Dan Orlovsky's <laughs> highlights. He wasn't aware. And let me know what you see. Mind you, he is <laughs> yeah. a five day a week pundit five day a week on pundit. ESPN. <laughs> there you go. Mark Sanchez on <laughs> FS1 <laughs> has quarterbacked the New York Jets yeah. and is most famously known for <laughs> running into a fat D. <laughs> yeah, I was nah, it wasn't well, a D. It was it was a lineman's D. Or maybe, cheap. A, maybe a fat butt. ass. All right. Not a fat D. But even but <laughs> needless to say, yeah. he's known for not being a very good quarterback. <laughs> but have an experience in that field. That butt yeah. fumble, man. Yeah. But even even like a Tony Romo, sorry, Reggie, for kind of... You know sports now, so I'm not going to say sorry, actually. Yeah. Yeah, you're gang gang. <laughs> Tony Romo, right? Like, as as him being a, a Cowboys quarterback, you know, they loved him over there. Yep. But Matt, I think he's Matt more loved. revered on analysis yeah. now, right? Yeah. Like, oh my... You, you hear people talking about yeah. it all the time. Yo, Tony Romo's going to predict a play. Yeah. Fucks yeah. around and do it Finding on the live Finding your lane game. is a beautiful yeah. thing. Absolutely. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, that, and, yeah. And what's crazy, too, is if you listen to the whole rant that Joe and um, Parks and everybody over there were saying, Joe actually, he said he liked the album. He did. So but, I feel like I feel like Drake only reacted off of the clip that academics posted. But let me tell you why I don't blame that. Okay. You know, when you're that busy, when you're that big, yeah. I don't see these cats digesting the whole thing. The whole pieces of contents of where they're being critiqued at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I could completely understand where someone is coming from where he's like, wait, what the fuck is going on here? Like <laughs> And and I feel like he f- took it personal because of the whole BBL thing and all so, the other stuff that they were saying. I heard I, I was watching the academic stream. Mm-hmm. And academic said he had a conversation with Drake. Yep. Mm-hmm. And in that conversation, he and he says that Drake actually spoke to Joe. Yeah. Yeah. And he says that a <laughs> oh, lot. Joe talked about that on the podcast. Okay. Joe Fire. actually yeah. read the DMs. Oh, they was DMing. They DMs. Oh, and Joe actually oh, read verbatim the DMs okay. between he and Drake. Oh wow. Okay. That's. Are we allowed to know the sentiments? Because I, I haven't know. watched I, it. I, it's probably out now. It's out now. Yeah. But I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> but your oh, I just shit. want you to know that but, that is a thing. But I did okay. hear like the gist of it was. I think the reason why Drake felt the need to kind of respond because he felt like it was derived in personal stuff. Okay. Yeah, because they have a history. Right? Yeah, like he said, it kind of felt a little. Uh, oh no, this is what he, respect. Yeah, like he disrespect. Said, yeah, it kind of sounded like, hey, you know, have your critiques on. If you like it, you don't like it. That's okay. That's cool. If you get it, you don't get it. Cool. I think a lot of his shit was, was a. Uh, was was the, was around respect, like mm-hmm. yo. However, you speaking on my name, just say it with respect, which yeah. is kind of funny because we kind of saw Birdman yeah, kind of chiming in on this whole beef recently, and a lot of that shit was <coughs> at Charlemagne and that Joe, and it was around like yo. I want you to res- put some respect on Champagne Poppy. And the, <laughs> the thing about that for me is <laughs> yeah, what a said. lot of people like to rebuttal the things, but they don't take yeah. the time to listen to the full thing. Yeah. I, mean, I was just so, saying that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. if yeah. I am a Drake or whomever I am, right? I'm only going to get bits and pieces from the people who send it to me because yeah. it's not even in my orbit. Because on a day-to-day basis, I doubt Joe Budden is pulling up in Drake's algorithm. And I think, going back to your academics point, academics actually said, yeah, Yachty told me, no, Drake told me that Yachty sent me something that you was going in on me. Yeah. So you're getting secondhand information a yeah. lot of the times, which is why you a get snippet. a lengthy uh, personal... Retort. detailed response from a Drake because yeah. I highly doubt he sat there and watched a 45 minute album review from Joe yeah. where if you did you would hear Joe 
Picked him up. Joe said his likes and his dislikes. It wasn't all hate, but of course the media, the blogs, they're only gonna take one snapshot and take from that and put it out. For sure. Can I can I get some flowers real quick? Oh, Talk wow. to me. No. I think <laughs> I think I deserve some flowers. Today. I'm not gonna lie. How so? We gave you your flowers at the top of the pot, nigga. Look at your drip. Yeah. How many flowers <laughs> you want? Like, you've already, you can want we, a whole bouquet? Can we swap? Selfish. We can't swap. Like you, I can't swap the tulips for the roses. Certified flower don't, boy. Don't ever ask me to swap. <laughs> can't swap roses. Don't ask me to swap nothing. Wait, why, why? Why? What happened, Alex? Hey, not for nothing, right? Because we are kind of talking about like hip hop pundits and stuff like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the last couple months now, we've been talking about sort of like the newer media in our space versus the older media. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was really big and adamant on saying, y'all, I don't think it's so much of our industry and him not respecting us. I think it's an age thing. Yeah. To Pierre's point that he mentioned, I saw a picture of Drake watching Kai Sinat live stream his album. Yeah, yeah that was funny. On the story. Kai Sinat is about 21, 22, 23, somewhere in that range. At who he actually promised a, a conversation and a call is 30. Yeah. And I think, and you know another thing that really fucked my head up? I can really tell that, of course, we all know by now. Like, yeah. And I just wish I would have got my flowers all that time then. <laughs> but it's okay. I'll take them now by myself. When I heard Kasha and the academics were having a conversation on stream, right? Yeah, and this is before the album came out. Yeah. I watched that too. Academics yeah. asked Kai, he goes, yeah, man, so who's your favorite rapper? Mm. Kai goes, A hey, Boogie. Yeah. <laughs> You could see the face. You could see the look on Academic's like, face. What? Like, what's wrong with that? Nah, there's he, nothing he wrong. He's from New York. Wait, what's, what's there's, he's from the Bronx. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. But if we're speaking about Drake trying to appeal to a younger crowd uh-huh. yeah. and who he's really trying to get at, right? And I go back to Drake calling Kai Sanat yeah. and not calling Champagne Poppy. It goes. Not calling. Not calling I'm, I'm bugging. Not calling <laughs> Academic. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he called Act, but. It was muted only on uh, on everything else except for Rumble. So, so none so none of academic fans really were able back. to hear the call. Yeah. The academics allegedly. When I when I see that, I go, "Yo, this shit was as clear as day." <laughs> so where the hell did y'all think he y'all was gonna get a "I Love My Wife" Chance the Rapper album from? <laughs> I don't, I just I'm just so confused. Like, what were the signs? Like, aren't there you, were no signs. I yeah. think it's just people hoping yeah. for something that they want. It's projection. It's a lot of it is projection. Got it. Got and it. I think in Joe's rant, there's a little projection. And I also think in Drake's response to Joe yeah. was a little bit of projection too. Because mm-hmm. again, I don't think you can try to paint somebody who's not that as being what it is he tried to portray Joe to be. Mm. That's my opinion. Mm-hmm. I do want to go back because... I also believe that there's a little bit of, I don't want to say hate, but some <sighs> animosity isn't the word that I'm looking for. There's a little bit of tension? Is it tension? leftover tension would be a good leftover word. Leftover tension? There's some leftover tension because on in side? 2016, Joe went on a rant about how he felt about views. Oh, okay. we remember and that I one. think that rant was <coughs> filled with a little bit more anger, a little bit more passion, a little bit more venom opposed to this previous rant or review. Yeah. So I think Drake took the 2016 review and coupled it and almost coupled it mm-hmm. or held Joe accountable for that review for gotcha. this current review. So I'm going to play that one for anybody who didn't listen to it. This is his I views think that review. That kid on that album that I heard sounds real fucking uninspired. <laughs> That's what I think. I think that music is real good. You can't fool a real nigga. You can fool them. You can fool the people that are not paying attention. That music sounds good and I enjoy it. I played that album all the way to DC and all the way way back. back. (laughs) 40, you sound amazing. 40 continues to progress. Drake, you do not. The emphasis. So that was his <laughs> that was his critique on That's views in 2016. Video. And I think that version of Joe is mm. how Drake still sees Joe yeah. and received that cr- criticism from Joe yeah. with that lens. He's like, like that unleashing yeah. those yes. feelings right so now. So it's like, nigga, from tuck. 2016, you gave me this kind of yeah. review. Here you go. Today I'm still getting the same type of energy mm. from the snapshots like that hate, I'm receiving. Like, quote, unquote, so hating. now let me bomb you. Let me fry you. Let me turn the internet like, against you. Let me like take a picture of you. What do you think what do you think did it? Was it the 
him talking about the types of women he's dealing with? I what think do, it what was do y'all that, think? Yeah, yeah. Nah, I think, I think it was that. Nah, Drake, I mean, it, it definitely had part of that in it, but I think when he was talking about um, his friends, because Drake is big yeah. on his friends, and You're right. his friends are a little bit younger, or around the 26, yeah. 27 age. Yeah. So I think it was definitely that, because if you come at his friends, then all right, like, say what you say, but that's that and the BBL, like I was saying before. Hmm. It's like crazy because this is like, there's so much to talk about because I came into this thinking like, honestly, I like agree with a lot of what is going on. Like I agree with a lot of Joe's sentiments and I feel like a lot of af- after the dust has settled, people I saw on Twitter, like they were like, wait, was Joe wrong though? I saw a lot of that. And then, but Drake though, I just think it's like you responding in that way with such passion. It's a damned if you do, damned if you don't. So if you don't, people are like, damn, he's quiet because we're right like he knows we're right and he's like hurting right now mm. but if he responds with such passion like he did it's like oh my god joe struck a nerve oh like you know he's right so i'm just like but i think he did stri- strike a nerve yeah, yeah i because think that's clear yeah, yeah even drake's father responded yeah, <laughs> yeah nah yeah. i know but like Uncle even Dennis, Dennis, Dennis i would not want my dad to do that say, like, i'll be like dad shut up Dennis, <laughs> and then his industry dad Birdman came out and, like both his pops came out and said yeah. some shit so yeah. Yeah. Said, like both his pops. i'm not yeah, gonna struck a nerve i think it did i'm deleting my dad Comment. I'm, not gonna I'm gonna yeah, I'll be like, Dad, can you delete that shit? Like, hack his account, like, whatever. Yo, chill, chill. Yeah, like, I love the support. Hmm. Like, I know you love me. You but know, I don't that know, shit. like, it, when someone, yeah. it's like with Savon. When Savon wants to respond to hate comments, I'm like, Savon, <laughs> go for it. Defend yourself. So, like, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like Drake, and it was like, oh, like, oh my God, Drake, like, don't mm-hmm. let him know they hurt you. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, just defend yourself. It, like, be funny, defend yourself. I, I really do feel like, I, I know I'm making a lot of sports analogies today. I really do feel like Drake is LeBron. Meaning like Oh, I love that. I was gonna say the same thing. Get out of here. I wrote that down. Are we right on time? I wrote wrote that down too. (laughs) Fact. Yo, I wrote it down. Okay. Why are you laughing so hard, Alex? (laughs) No, because I know you had it written down. I was just I'm sorry. (laughs) Okay, I have no idea what you guys mean by that. (laughs) But in terms of like LeBron has been doing it for so long. Yeah. Yeah. LeBron is one (laughs) NBA player that when he retires, no matter if you a fan or not, you're gonna miss it. You know oh what? yeah, that's why I'm trying to show my appreciation yeah. for Drake I'm not right now. Lie. Yeah. I get, yo, you're good. Why would I do? I know why he got the LeBron <laughs> reference queued up. Yo, he was just with Rich Paul. <laughs> he was just with Rich Paul in there. Yo, <laughs> so I already I see, know. The, I see the play. Ah, you saw me. So me on side. So me on side with Rich. Yo, Rich it up. He's always five steps ahead, guys. Yo, I be seeing you. So he promoted his new book. I get it. Yeah, I get it. I did a little alley oop. I see. You see what I just did? Little alley oop. Yo, we do this pod thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> One of the reasons why I compare Drake yeah. to, to LeBron, not just because of the longevity, but because mm-hmm. he's also the ultimate assist man. Mm. Like, That's going real. back to J. He Cole. He puts people on, yeah. I think even to J. Cole, he set him up to look like the to greatest rapper yeah. in the world. So he did, he did. That, that was my correlation with uh, Drake yeah. and, 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 and uh, LeBron. And even with the critique thing, right? Yeah. Like, LeBron is always going to be critiqued because of the rarefied air yeah. that, that we put him in. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? I'm sure Drake knows that as well. But you know when you're that when you're that you're really competing with yourself. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. Like every year, LeBron is, for instance, right. We have to salute the fact that Drake, compared to his contemporaries, and I'm always keep going back to Kendrick and J Cole. Yeah, he is way more active than them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I don't know like, how I feel about absolutely. that though. Because... I'm gonna I'm tell you why because okay. I know you're gonna give me J Cole verses. I'm going to give you like, yo, bro, he put out an album, then put out a dance album, then put out a collab album, yeah. and then put out another album right now while he was on while tour. On tour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I respect the workhorse. That's like LeBron averaging the 28 a game. That's a fact. Like, you know you're going to get a 28 a game, but how are you going to get the 28 yeah. is how people either critique you or are happy with or yeah. are not happy with. It's one of those things where the reason, one of the reasons I believe he took Joe Budden's criticism so hard is because he's probably, and this happens with everybody who's ultra successful, mm-hmm. they get surrounded by people who tell them yes, or they get surrounded by people who like tell you're doing them great, they're the honey. greatest, you're the best. <laughs> like, for Yachty to tell us that one of great Drake's greatest verses was on this album, was on this album. Yeah. Like, I hear you really like, just... Which- 
Which he's, one? He's riding the Fat D crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he's riding it crazy at that. There was nothing that said his best verse of all time or his what was lyricism. He to? That's what I was wondering. I don't know. I have no idea but what verse maybe, he was even talking that's his about. Man's like, though. You're supposed this, to big up your man's. Right? Drake didn't increase the quality of his raps on his album. It was a good album. It was a it's good, a good project. I, oh, I didn't it's say not that. bad. I did like the project. It's a great like, it's that. a really good album. It's a really good project. But yeah. I think when you have people that are newer in your circle and on, it's, it's, it's not even a knock to Yachty or Drake or the age thing it's just inevitable if I'm a 37 year old man and I'm working with somebody who's between the ages of 24 and 26 when I first came out that person was in grade school <laughs> yeah so just the way that life works out we cannot technically be friends without you having a certain reverence for me yeah it's almost like going back to lebron james when he's playing with the anthony davis or uh, austin reeves or some of the younger people yeah. on his team they see like who was it jackson hayes is yeah. that his name jackson, jackson hayes. hayes yep he's a yeah, new jackson member hayes, yeah. see you knew that <laughs> <laughs> sure, reggie. i mean james, reggie brought that one in she already knew jackson yeah. hayes. brought that one in yeah He's on the team with LeBron James, <laughs> yes. right? He just got signed to the Lakers. Oh, he's a younger yeah. guy, probably third, fourth year in the league, something like that. Yeah. He's, he's younger is my point. Mm -hmm. They were interviewing him. Mm -hmm. In the midst of his interview, <laughs> LeBron James did like a windmill dunk at practice. Yeah. He stopped in awe of mid, LeBron James doing it because he was in such shock and reverence of, oh my God, this is LeBron James on my team, still performing at a high level. And it wasn't just like another teammate doing it. So when Yachty is around Drake, I don't expect him to say anything other than this is the greatest person ever. This is the best verse I ever heard in my mm. life. Because there's such a it's reverence greatness. for Drake there because yeah. of the greatness in who Drake is. So when we hear Yachty saying these type of things, you got to almost take it with a grain of salt because yeah. he can't judge it unbiasedly yeah. mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And then it also leads to why Drake is able to make this type of music where certain audiences feel alienated, like the older audiences or the people who want the like lyricism him, and the yeah. raps, right? You're going to feel a way. You'd be all right, go bump my old shit. <laughs> because somebody like a Yachty being <laughs> Ain't that so, what said? No, nah, he did say yeah. that. Go bump the old shit. But somebody like a Yachty being mm -hmm. in your camp so closely, he's only going to be able to tell you, yes, this is great. Yes, mm. this is good. Mm. He can't give you a different perspective. So when somebody like a Joe is like, yeah, I really wasn't feeling this, or I wasn't... You know, this isn't for me. It's for It stings a little bit more. Yeah. Because your immediate circle or the people you're creating with are all up. younger. They all respect you. You're their GOAT. Mm. So how do you so get a different really, perspective? Who's really challenging you? Exactly. Yeah, That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, and I, mean, I don't want to call anybody around him a quote unquote <clears throat> yes man because I don't know them. Yeah. yeah. But what I can say, true. when you're around great, like, I'll put it on me. Bro, when I've been in the studio and I know, I'll give you the perfect example. A few years ago when J. Cole, uh, um, excuse me, when Drake and Pusha T was going at it, right? And the Joe Bunny podcast got the Pusha T interview. Mm -hmm. I was in there in awe. There was not a question that didn't sound like it was the greatest question <laughs> in the world to me. Yeah. There wasn't anything that so, anybody uh, what did you tell me. Pusha T? Nah, say what was he's like, this is the best interview in the it, world. Like, oh. That Joe, Rory, and all, when they had those yeah. moments that yeah. they weren't the greatest movement, nobody could tell me any different because I was so fucking close to it. Yeah. Mm. So for true. Yachty to be that fucking close to a Drake, a great I point. don't expect him to have a different perspective because it's like you're surrounded, you're in the day-to-day -day of greatness what yeah. do you say to the people that uh say we don't allow for others like a future to grow i don't see um like when future releases albums his last album wait for you was featuring drake yeah mm -hmm. uh i also don't find it to be a coincidence that we haven't seen the two of them together since her loss talk was... about that wait uh, talk about that I want to talk about talk it. Talk about that. Wait, what's going on I don't with that? Know, I'm going to be honest with you, Reggie. I don't know specifically what's going on, but just as okay. a fan from the outside looking in, I'm going to repeat this. I don't think it's a coincidence that we haven't seen Drake and Future together since Drake put out an album with another Atlanta artist in 21 Savage. You think they're not frenzies anymore? I don't know. I'm going to be honest with you, but let me tell you what made me smile. There's a song on this album called What Would Pluto Do? Mm -hmm. And those okay. of you who know, Pluto, Pluto is Pluto is Future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... 
it did kind of sound like Savon. He was asking, yo, what would Pluto do? <laughs> yeah, like, yo, what, do? what would Future do with my... You know I mean, saying? is there any reason to think that they're not cool anymore besides the fact that we haven't seen them together? Did anything happen? I just, I just remember seeing Drake and Future together at a high clip. Yeah, I haven't seen them, and I, again, I'm not in their lives. I could be completely just wrong. Speculation. Yeah, just as a fan, like, because I like hearing when I heard. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, real quick. Wait for you is one of the best songs I've heard. Oh my god! In my, a long time. In a very long time. Really? Is it better than Snooze by SZA? It's up there. Oh, I put all of that me. shit in the same like because like I don't good have R&B? A, yeah I don't have yeah like I don't have specifically a rank for it. Okay, but I save on those two songs like they did a lot like it, like that timeless is, timeless that is yeah, yeah like yeah. that is high quality music. Throw a little yeah. Thames on there. I will wait for I you. I will wait for so right and I love when they got together and did that shit. <laughs> That's your girl. It felt seamless, right? Yeah. yeah. When we heard their joint album together, however many years ago we heard it. That's definitely our era and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So again, I don't find it to be a coincidence, right? But Future is somebody, I guess, in his age range and actually older than Drake. Older, yeah. That when he puts music out, it's Future. Okay. And I will say this, right? Because yeah. I'm kind of answering in a way too, because I kind of had to think about this as well. I guess what people are kind of confused about is, I guess with Future, he's always himself. Yeah. And I'm not going to say Drake is not always himself. Like I said earlier, I think he's always showing you where he's at now. Yeah. Future's 39, by the way. Future's 39, yeah. right, right. Damn. You see what I'm saying? He's older than Drake. Kevin Hart, but he be talking. Yeah, yo, relax. Relax to my dog. Yeah, yo. <laughs> but when Future come out talking about Addies, women, you know what I'm saying? Having mm-hmm. sex, living fast, he doesn't receive the same backlash. I feel like he does, though. Does people it? are like, oh my God, this toxic shit again. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, okay. I feel like people have said too. that, but right. I get your okay. point. Okay. I feel like that, too. And I think yeah. it's, it's twofold, too, because mm-hmm. it goes back to like the push a T point. Everybody always say he only talks about the same type of content. But yeah. the reason that Drake doesn't get a pass is because the way that you entered our hearts... <laughs> Literally, you yeah, motherfuckers oh, get sentimental. Oh, Savon is saying you introduce a vibe you can't maintain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of those, you get, like the way that Drake, <laughs> the vulnerability, introduced yeah. himself to us was through being relatable, was through his vulnerability, yeah. uh, was through transparency, was, was through drive. us being able to feel mm-hmm. something that he was going through. Yeah. And on this album, I know what he. One going of his lyrics himself. is. Bust that pussy open for a real one. No. She called me her baby like I'm still one. They say love is like a BBL. You won't know if it's real until you feel one. <laughs> you might have to fill up. You might have to fill up. Like, not gonna lie. Like when you know I mean? heard that though, like I'm not the whole like, oh my god, I need mature Drake. Although I would love it. I agree with the critique. But like when I heard that opening, I was like, I was little. I was a little like, yeah. Yo, like it sounded Claudine, weird. Claudine, 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 it sounded a little Catherine. weird, like coming from him at this age, a little bit. So I just, I agree with both sides. I don't know. Like, was that Virginia Beach? No, that was on the song with J Cole, first oh, person shooter. First person, okay. Um, what I asked, I asked not. Remember when Nyla was here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we were talking about Drake a little bit. Hey Nyla. Okay. What's up, Nyla? <laughs> and I was saying that to your point that you just said, Reggie. You were saying that you want mature Drake. I, think, I, I do. Yeah. I know. I see the appeal and I agree mm-hmm. with the critique, but I'm mm-hmm. also like, it's fine. Like Drake makes the hits. It's fine. Like I, I'm not begging for mature Drake and, and either. I, but my thing is already, I feel like we've received mature Drake on all other albums. Okay. You see what I'm saying? That is and, a good and it's point. like that is that's what I'm point. saying. We've heard it already. Like we've heard him talk about his story, his, his grandmother, so his why aunt, are you going his backwards uncle. Is the thing. Because, but, but back You're going to, backwards. But back to <laughs> but back to where you at in life right now. Who's to say? Like I said, he just purchased. I heard it's a ranch, some fly in Houston. Mm-hmm. Who's to say he don't find him one Southern Belle? Oh, how would love that? And, and just, because he's talking and, about Catherine and Claudine and Saudis, and change. I'm gonna pack that bitch like a Saudi. He, he, said, like, he, said he packs them in his in, their, in his phone. He packs all the names in there in his phone like some sardines. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all those sardines are really good for you. Yeah, they're awesome. Omega threes. Omega threes. Get them up. <laughs> Uh, but who's to say, Reggie, that we don't see that again? Because I've seen, I've heard maturity from him when he was younger. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's giving me like, mm. yo, hold on, like maybe this is just. Oh, I you see, what, you see what I'm backwards. saying? Now? It's that is different. a good point. That's a good point. It, it, right? Different if I never heard him speak about his qualms with his mother. Mm. Ne- different if I never hear him speak about his qualms with his father. If he never addressed fatherhood, and then we get this album, I understand. Okay. But I feel like we've gotten it already. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And let's so not forget that he has given he it has to us. He has given okay. it to us already. Get what I'm saying? So it's just like, what 
else do we expect? Like, especially you uh, guys, you guys, this is your favorite thing on the internet. Actions mean more than words. Y'all love y'all run around with that shit like it's a an undirty t-shirt. Y'all wear it every day. Man, your actions mean more than your words. What part of this man's actions told y'all that this is where he's at right now? I'm gonna keep going nothing, back to no, this. Nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> nothing at all. I just think we want to see evolution. And I think it, it yeah. goes back to when you set the bar, because we all look at Hove as the greatest. We all look at Hove as the best. And so we're watching Down somebody something. reach those levels and <laughs> yeah. the money and the accolades and all that comes with it. Right. But yet the maturity levels and then also your peers. I think your peers help too. Like yeah. I don't think the so who was it that he had? Oh, I can't remember. Uh huh. I'm listening. He had dissed or shaded one of his exes or somebody in a previous song and it, it kind of made headlines but okay i don't think Ooh, drake the, re, yeah drake it wasn't did. rihanna that you're talking not, about not not on this album it was a previous song previous okay, album okay, okay. i don't believe that the rihanna line or subliminals landed the way that he expected it to land how, what did he expect though, Drake? I don't, Come was, on, like, at that yeah. point, I will. I can't defend him at all for that because that was weird. Yeah. That was because, lame. That was lame. Rihanna is evolved as yes, a businesswoman, a woman, as like, somebody who we know has mother. overcome domestic violence mm -hmm. and abuse. Yeah. Yes. Somebody who has created jobs and has really mm -hmm. focused on creating opportunity for Black people. Yeah. A woman at that, the accolades, the music, the family. The like family. we see the yeah. evolution in her. So mm -hmm. for you to think taking a little 16 bars to to diss her or aim at her and her man or her situation, <laughs> like if you got smoked with crazy. ASAP, oh, go for ASAP. Yeah. And this is track. Rihanna four, has not acknowledged you. <laughs> Since she dubbed your kiss on the stage, tough. we I that don't was, think I've seen y'all. That together. was tough. Like so, <laughs> that was tough. That's where I'm able but, to poke the holes in. Yes, he has given us vulnerability, but that. it doesn't show us growth. So because you gave us vulnerability in the past, doesn't show us that you're growing today or evolving wait, today. Wait, that's exactly wait, wait, what I'm no, saying. No, wait, wait. I have, I have a so. Mm -hmm. Who are we to say that he hasn't grown though? Because like. What, how do we know what Drake is meant to be like at age thirty seven? Like we don't, saying. we're not we God. Like, that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, and to your and <sighs> yeah. to your relatability Yo. point, bro. All right, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. I think a large part of the the backlash is because it's about Rihanna, who is so well established, sure. who is so you know she's done all of this. She's a billionaire. She mm -hmm. has two beautiful children now with ASAP Rocky. But let's keep it a buck. If we want to talk about relatability, mm -hmm. save on. We all been there where we 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 looked at shorty we used to deal with and be like, your sex is trash. Yeah, yeah. I know. Oh, get the fuck no, out. I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Niggas is lying. No, I'm, lying, no, bro. I'm, no, I'm I don't not. That. You save said on. we no. Save on. Wait, no, you all, never you never all. felt that emotion. I never looked at somebody I loved and was like, yo, her shit is trash. After. Someone why no, did he, no, you? Okay, no, no, I've like, never no, done no, that. Bro. He's, he's saying I'm not saying that. No, no, I believe that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that. That's not what Alex is saying. Thank you, Pierre. Pierre, that's not what I'm saying. What are you saying? You went to the ladder of that real quick. You're a good you're a great podcast. He did the joke. He did the, he oh, moved the, pole, he moved the, the goal, goal post, post for a second. Don't uh, do that. What I'm saying is, on that album, he was talking, to, he was shading his ex yeah. and their new relationship. Yeah. He was yeah. being a little that salty. Is, yeah, that and, is the and, crux of that. You are a nowhere. billionaire. You don't got to shade no other man. But, 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 but back I, to, right. but hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. He wasn't shading <laughs> ASAP. But, but he was I, talking no, he was shading ASAP. He said, that nigga can't leave. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that part. <laughs> no, yeah, that yeah. was over. Not that one. He was like, he had to say that. Wait, wait, hold on. Y'all probably, probably still That shit was hard. No, no, no. No, no, Listen to how stupid that is because he's like, I left you, Rihanna. He can't, ASAP can't leave you. It's like, bro, she doesn't want you, Drake. Right. Like, that that, crazy. Listen how stupid that was. Crazy. Like, uh. you feel me? And I'm not. And I'm not speaking to the healed here. I want to be very clear. I don't think this is an album for healed people. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's but not. It's not. But if you're talking about just relatability. There are people that feel that way, yo. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. to the point that I wanted okay. to make oh, as well. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, like just relating. Just do it in there real quick. Yeah, like, okay. yo, you know you've been salty when your ex joint looking like she all happy. Oh, now she got a kid with that nigga? <laughs> 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 so, and you you're happy? happy? You're happy? What the? Nah, yeah. throw a little. And it's not you know what me. I'm saying? Okay, I see your point. What I will say as well, I think the R&B on this album was amazing. I think a lot of the writing on the R and B stuck with me the most. I think you could literally st create an entire EP off of the R and B joints. Let me get into them real quick. Virginia Beach, I will say, track one, track one. 
I was expecting for some sort of a push a T something. Yeah. When I just see Virginia Beach, oh, but, yeah, but again, yeah, yeah. that's back to assumptions and projecting, right? Yeah. yeah. He never said it was anything <laughs> like that, but I ain't going to front Drake yeah. track one Virginia Beach. I thought you were going to give him a little something. That's a good title to, you know what I mean? To get right to it, right? Right. Regardless, and the beat was hard. Yeah, yeah. And the beat was hard, right? Regardless, what did he do on that beat, Pierre? He gave us something very reminiscent of what we heard on Tuscan Leather. Yeah. That reverse sample vocal coming in. I like it. Yeah. I love when he does that. <laughs> <laughs> It don't be sound like that. <laughs> I love that shit. Though. I love that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, that shit I love, it brought me right back to when I was in high hard. school. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. And granted, maybe, you know, I thought he was going to rap on it a little bit more. On a song standpoint... I really like that fucking song, and I'm not out here caping, yo. This is this is a dude that says he hates Certified Lover Boy to this day. <laughs> I want to be very clear. I'm That's not here. crazy. I, I don't ten, like that. Oh, you know what? Race your mind is another one I like on there. Mm -hmm. That's another one. Say Vaughn was, was talking that about that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Race your mind, and, and you know what's funny? Both R and B records are my favorites from that album. So back to this one, Virginia Beach, mm -hmm. Amen with Tizo Touchdown. Yeah, I like fire. it a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, calling for you. It's not an R and B joint. Now that could shout out to Cash Cobain, shout out to Power Trav, New York natives. They produced this song, and you can hear a lot of the Jersey drill. Reggie, Savon, yeah, you're familiar yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot of those elements in that it song. Was. So if you're saying like, "Yo, this is for the, this one is for the youth," is that the sexy see, drill? That's that sexy drill mm -hmm. shit. You know what I'm saying? Which track, to, which track is that again? That's on the third track. That's calling oh, for you. Call for you. me, big oh, shout. Which, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's on the third one. Big shout out to you know Cash Cobain, my boy Chow Lee. They've been on that sound. It's current. I get it, mm -hmm. right? Fear of Heights. And that's kind of when he's getting at Rihanna at the start of it. Then yeah. he gets real menacing. <laughs> that's <laughs> a good feel? word. That's a good Not, word. Real menacing. Not my favorite song, but man, how we started, I really liked it. Mm -hmm. Cool. After that, we go into Daylight. Daylight, menacing again. He ends yeah. with his son. I thought that was kind of cool. Oh, real quick. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, um, yeah. Um, Friday actually produced on, on Calling For You. Awesome. I yeah, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. That's super fire. That, that's him on the on a uh, backing vocal. Look at that. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So again, another younger act, a newer act. That's super dope. Big Zo. Daylight I like because I don't know if I like Daylight as much as I like the R and B records, but I do want to stay on the R and B Daylight records, was right? Not good. You don't think Daylight was nah, good? That was one of the worst things <laughs> really? I've heard in my life. It's getting better to me. It's growing. That, that was a bad song. That was a bad song. I listen, I I I respect your opinion. I respect your opinion. Uh I don't give a fuck with Yeet. Scrap it. <laughs> Yo, um, that yeah. was a pretty bad song. Yeah, too. I didn't. I didn't. And, and let Who me be, is Yeet? Yeet, let me. But let me let me keep it a buck, right? <laughs> Yeet is one of the. He's he's one of the newer guys in this space, yeah, right? He's like popping a, with the kids, like right? a Lucky, with the kids. a Uzi, a Yeet. Like they have these Playboy Cardis, like they have hives. Yeet is another dude that has a hive from that shit, right? That, and that's what I'm talking about. He's being strategic. Yeah, I can see him being strategic with that, right? But I feel like if uh, it was a good song, regardless of if we knew who was Yeet was or not, we would have been like, "Yo, this song is fire." Little, but I just think of. Not objectively, but subjectively, it was not a strong song. I'm with you. I'm, I'm not just going to lead me to my next point. How the fuck he fuck up a Bad Bunny, bro? Well, we're going to get okay, into that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all niggas talking about heat. I'm here to talk about real niggas I know. We're going to get into that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You do that a lot. Don't do that. Talk about shit you don't know. Don't do that. I don't know a yeet. I know a Bad Bunny. But I do. I got you. Hold on, we're going to get into that. Hold on, we're going to get a lot of people don't know And also we're going in chronological order. Yeah, and I don't want it to sound like this is a diss to the newer sound. It's not, yeah. A lot of my friends make the newer sound, yo. And and they be killing it, too. Shout out to my nigga Just. Shout out to Just. Shout out to Just. Shout out to Moolah. Pick one. You know what I'm saying? They do that shit pretty well. They do. And there's a song that Yeet released. This is, and I want you guys to do your Googles. Come on, I wasn't going to come in here and just talk about nothing. Go listen to this song by Yeet called Bigger Than Everything. He released it on August 10th. Uh, and this past August that just dropped. This song sounds strong. It's also produced by Benny X, who has a bunch of credits on this Drake album. Ooh, okay, okay. You feel me? So oh, if there was any... That's another Zoe. That's another Zoe. Big that's another Zoe. Zoe. Come yeah. on now. If there was any swap I would have wanted on this album, it would have been that Yeet record for this Yeet record. Because it kind of felt like Drake went into Yeet's world, and I wish it could have met in the middle a little bit. Because mm -hmm. it's but his cool. album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to the R&B, right? So at R&B, we got Amen... Fear Fun. of Heights a little bit. Yeah. 7969 Santa, I like a lot. Mm -hmm. Tizo ends on it. Oh, That's amazing. three. Mm -hmm. Slime You Out sounds really good in the album. Yeah. I liked it, it before it came it out, right? Yeah, but I liked it, it with the little radio the intro. Of the album. That, was that was hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was super that was hard. Was introducing it was cool. hard. We yeah. have four R&B joints. Bah Slime You Out into Bahama Promises. Man. <laughs> Bahama Promises is probably probably the my second favorite song on this whole <gasps> album. Me too. 
Wow, look, would you look at that? Yes. R&B. So we're at five now. <laughs> we're at five R&B joints. There's 23 joints on this album. I'm sorry, Savon. I know you want to get the bad bunny. We're going to go right to <laughs> that. You're good. Te- I know you're anxious. Technically, it's you two good. interludes. Yes. Yes. So 21 songs. I'm not trying to neglect yes. the audience. Yeah. You know, we got a certain demographic we got a certain I'm trying demo. to cater to. Got you, know you got saying? you. That's beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Try our best. Another great written R&B song. We're at six right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm listening to the album right now like, yo, the R&B joints coming on <laughs> and they staying on. I'm at six right now, just R&B joints. And then we get to my favorite song on the album at 13, Drew a Picasso. Mm. Oh my God. The sample, the R&B vocal sample with how he talk about how women is sleeping with other men when he's performing at other shows, that's the Drake I know. Mm. <sighs> Give me a that shot That was your uh, pipe down. That was my pipe down this album. We had <laughs> seven <laughs> R&B records so far, right? We, yeah. And niggas thought they was about to get rapped. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Members only. I like it. Not yeah. my favorite party next door Drake song. Yeah. I like it though. It's all right. It's, it's cool. all right, but it's, it's cool. cool. I didn't yeah, hate yeah, yeah. it. For me, it was nice to see Party Next Door. Yeah. Always good to see Party Next Door. It was great to see Party Next Door and Drake. Yes. Because we know Drake don't be fucking with his artist that long. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, shout out to Majid Jordan. Yeah. Uh, There's the something weekend. going on there. Shout out to uh, Roy, Roy, Woods. Roy Woods. All these niggas. He don't shout be putting them niggas on his album. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that this nigga's like 10 years old. Division. <laughs> shout out to Division. Shout out to Party. Had to go get management from. Uh, There's going to be a documentary one day on that. Okay, <laughs> but. He don't be fucking with his artist. <laughs> shout out to all of those great acts, man. I love y'all's music. Yeah, they're all great. Me. So. so already by track, by track 14, there are eight R&B records that I like. I'm so surprised that we haven't heard a lot of dialogue on this shit. Cause I'm like, yo, fam, like, if for anything, yo, you could literally make an R&B album out this shit. Then I'll be quick, real quick, right? Think, we got the think. BBL love interlude. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. He was R&B joint. I'm at nine. Mm-hmm. Cool. After about polar opposites, polar opposites I liked, but not as much as other ones. Regardless, yeah, that's, that's about nine track. to ten R&B songs yeah. that I genuinely like from this album. So sorry, y'all. I can't come in here and call this shit trash, yo. I can't even give you 10, mm. 9, 10 joints on the whole CLB joint that I really like like that. Damn. You feel what I'm saying? That's yeah, real yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Now, Savon, I want to hear about your the, the Bad Bunny joint, man. <laughs> I'm just What's mad. up? That's your demo. No, let's go. Up. This, let's it's go, not go, my go, demo. Because okay. I didn't like to. Because you need another vibe. And like, when I see Drake and Bad Bunny, when you <laughs> make something like this. This is. This is. Uh, when you make something like this. that <laughs> Ernie. And yeah, and though. <laughs> I can't I go rush. back to the bullshit you gave me on your album, bro. Listen yeah, to this. He was vi- like, I felt him in this. And I don't know what he said. <laughs> I want to sing so bad, but I know I'm going to sound stupid. But listen, no, sing this part right here. Here's the hook. We are currently listening to MIA. No, no, no. <laughs> Please don't turn the lights off. We are currently listening to. They're not going to see me. They turn the lights off in here. I got some pigment on my skin. Just the white balance on the hair. Let's go. Look at Reggie thinking about white balance. Production wow. queen. You see, I'm a, I'm a quick production learner. Queen. But when you do shit like that, like <laughs> yeah. I don't want to hear the yeah. shit that you put on with. Like it just wasn't. It just wasn't given. Like <sighs> I felt Drake do accents and languages yeah. much better than he did on his own yeah, album. That was and a little, that a was strange. Cringe. You know what that sound like? I'm gonna show you what that sound like. Play that like, to me. Yeah. Because it was <laughs> strange how bad it sounded. This like, is how I sound natural. when I try to speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin A2. A2. <laughs> I love how you had that queued up. Esteban. Esteban. <laughs> wait, wait. You, it's weird because on Mia. That's how he sounds. No, no, on Mia, I just know, yeah. like, Drake spoke Spanish on Mia, but he didn't sound bad. It sounded pretty uh Like, fluid. fluid. Yeah, yeah, and, But yeah. then on, on <laughs> Gently. Right. He sound like it what I just played. Weird. Like, why? What, what was he doing? That like, was disgusting work. <laughs> but I think, look, yeah. in the context of the album, like I listened to obviously the album straight through, and then when yeah. that song came out, the Bad Bunny song came out, it was so Bad. disgustingly just like out of place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But today I revisited it in the gym. Like I just played it. Just played it. Ugh. It was. It wasn't bad. Like it was pretty good. Like I could picture it. Be played not. outside. So, do you hate it so much, Savon, in the context of the album? I can't or do you smoke think, cougar to it. Or do you, no, no. I think you <laughs> can. It, I think it was a stand. If it was a standalone song, I feel like you would like it. 
I can't smoke hookah to his part. I can smoke hookah to Bad Bunny's like, part. No, I feel like... But to Drake's part, I can't vibe with that, bro. As a man who doesn't <laughs> speak Spanish but enjoys the Latin culture, yeah. I need to at least be able to vibe with the Latin community. <laughs> and I don't feel but like the Latin, Latin niggas culture. approve to that just shit, just want to connect? I don't feel like they Damn. approve, so I don't approve. Damn, that's crazy. Shout out to all my niggas uptown. I will say this, right? <laughs> um, I guess it's okay to kind of age in your own way. Okay. The other day, we uh, teased something on Patreon for YouTube and on Patreon. It's up now. Facts. We intro that podcast with a song from Meek Mill and Rosé. Mm-hmm. And to me, I'll speak for myself, it felt so good to hear it. I guess the most refreshing part about it was like, yo, these are two individuals who are staying solid to what they want to do mm-hmm. and how they want to sound. You mm-hmm. feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So again, I can't put Meek Mills or Rosé's growth on a Drake, or even, I don't even know if I call it growth or just where they add in, where they're adding in their life, right? Yeah. But mm-hmm. I will say it felt super good to hear two dudes feel super confident in the sound they want to stay in, and it still sounds good, and it still sounds good. Yeah. You kind of see what I'm saying? Huh? Like where? I just think he's gonna Drake is gonna keep getting the same critique. Forever yeah. until he addresses Steps it. Away. Yeah. No, no, no. Until he addresses it. I don't think. <laughs> nah, I, I it, think that these are my sentiments on the album. Before yeah. people, you know, they like to just pick and choose what they listen to. Yeah. I think that this album was not terrible. It was not my favorite. Right, but right. this better not be his last album, Drake's. I don't think this it's better be. not be his last. He, album. he can't go out like this. Bit. He can't. He said he's gonna step away for a little bit. That is the next point I did want to get into, Pierre. So I'm very glad that you're bringing that up. Um. Actually, before we get into that, I want Kendrick to kind of hop in his bag, yo. I f- that's when did, when did his last album drop? Was it twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two? Kendrick's album twenty twenty two, right? Uh, last year or I think it was last year. Okay, and you guys got your Googles in your phones. But when I <laughs> he's say, like y'all y'all look it up. <laughs> yeah, when I want when I say I want Kendrick to kind of turn it up, Reggie. I mean, I want Kendrick to be wherever he's at in his beautiful villa while he's doing a thousand push ups. His last album was 2022. And, and, and chin ups. Okay, his last album was 2020. I want. Him, I know Kendrick Lamar is in his laboratory, looking at Drake and Cole, Kiki Key together. <laughs> at least I hope he is. I ain't gonna lie to you. And I really do hope that that puts him in a certain bag. And you know, when we kind of see those types of lyricists get into those bags with the exchange, we get very high quality music. Quite high quality music out of it. Yeah. And I really would love to see a Kendrick Lamar go like, you know what, man? I see like, cause J. Cole was probably the one guy who's he was probably on the fence with, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Drake, we know what's up and it's stuck for real. If y'all not paying attention at this point, that's on you. Yeah. Yo, you want to hear something crazy? Yeah. This is these are Drake's um accolades so far. Overall, he's at he has 193 awards. Five Grammy Awards, 51 nominations, 29 awards from 81 nominations at the Billboard uh, Music Awards, and, cl- and including Artists of the Decade. And he's still... And yeah. s- similar to what you were saying, I think we won't uh, really appreciate what he's done until he's retired. Because he, he still feels like he hasn't received his flowers yet. I heard that on his album again. I kind of heard him say that. I don't know what project it was, but to hear him say that was like... You really feel like you ain't getting your flowers yet, gang? Who, who's the ghost that Drake? Who's the ghost that Drake is chasing? Chasing himself. The, the ghost. The ghost. You know oh, what they the say? Ghost. You're chasing oh, ghost. I see like, what you're saying. Like they say, LeBron James, and again, going back to LeBron. Yeah. They say he's <clears> chasing a ghost that he can't catch. He said that. Like yeah. I'm chasing a ghost. I'm chasing Michael Jordan. Yeah. Right. Michael Jordan. Like in your eyes, I can't pass him. I can't play against him. So I can't prove that I'm better than him. Mm-hmm. So who is the ghost mm-hmm. that Drake is chasing? Is mm-hmm. it Kendrick? Is it Jay Z? Is and it... Alex? He has said he's like th- this sentiment, like, "Oh, I'm chasing that still, like that satisfaction still." Yeah, he kind of said it on the album. You said he, he's now. He literally said they still ain't giving me my flowers. So okay, that's okay, what I'm okay. saying. So and, if and he doesn't yeah. feel like that, but yeah. we all yeah. acknowledge, like, nigga, you're the best. <laughs> right. Who nah. is he chasing? Okay, is it it's Hove? different. Is okay. it Michael Jackson? Is nah, it Kanye yeah. West? Is it Jay Z? It's right. different. Can I say right. like my answer? It's a little corny, but you know, I'm... go for it. I feel like. There is no answer to this. Like, there's no specific, like, oh, once I pass Jay-Z in this amount of accolades that, boom, I'll be I'll be happy. He's never going to feel that way until he himself yeah. internally really believes, like, yo, I am the GOAT. And, like, you you, can't, you guys yeah. can't say anything to me. It's, I'm happy. Yeah. I'm satisfied. Until he fully reaches that with 
you know, age or therapy or whatever, yeah. he'll never be satisfied. That's why it's like so important for like self validation. Yeah. I feel like that's when for sure. that's the only that's the only way this this chase will ever end, yeah. in and, my opinion. And if you're competitive and like, you know, you've been dubbed before by everybody else in the industry and you up, up, up now, yeah. Yo, I'm running this till the till the the, the, the tank is on E. Yeah. Because at that point, what else can you say? You know what I mean? But he like doesn't if he feels like he still doesn't get the flowers, we we all give him the flowers. He sold out the uh, New York arenas for a week straight. Like yeah. we clearly love him. He still doesn't believe it yet because, like, again, I don't know this guy, but it seems like he still needs that validation, which is why I'm saying like you're only gonna get that within yourself. So yeah. now that Savon is back, I want to talk about what I wanted to talk about uh, a few minutes ago. I left. Yeah, just for a second. Oh, my fault. It wasn't, it wasn't nothing. Nah, we're not supposed to, we're not even supposed even to let them know. Nah, we're not. I wanted to um to bring because you know like Pierre was just saying P Drake has mentioned that he is gonna take a hiatus mm -hmm. away from music. Do you guys feel like this is going to be uh, the time where he takes in what Reggie was just saying, the realization of knowing who he is? Yeah. Or is it is it the time where you're just looking for new inspiration? What do y'all think? I'm is gonna looking forward do? to his hiatus. By the way, he said <laughs> it's because of his tummy issues. He said his health. But That's yeah. real. I think just overall he just needed a mental break, and I. Uh, yes. Yeah. I, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. But I think Niggas like life I chill. really am looking forward to this because <laughs> I, every time people say like Drake drops every every year and all do I, I do appreciate that. Like I'm more on the side of like quality over quantity. So I like when we have like two years in between albums. So this break, I feel like it's going to be so good. He's going to come back refreshed. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Yeah. Now to say Vaughn, how do you feel like, you know, what is, what is this hiatus going to breed for him? What do you think it does? Is it uh, is it a time for new inspiration? Is it a I think it it will allow him to live i think mm. because of his oh. output he hasn't really been able to live or maybe even gain new experiences like we've all been on tour or kind of know what tour life is like or yeah. we've all traveled Shaking here on this moving. podcast and i can't even imagine a tour of his magnitude Damn. i did a little podcast tour right <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we did weekend tours <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i was physically exhausted right like there were some days and at that point i was a little bit heavier but now you cut was, some weight. I, I some. Have, what you mean you. some? It's but a whole new person. <laughs> 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 my man. You look good. Thank you. There were some days <laughs> where when we were on tour yeah. and I'm in Texas for the first time, I wanted to try the food in Texas. Yeah. But I knew if I ate that burger, that barbecue steakhouse <laughs> chicken wing burger, what it could do to I you. knew if I ate that, I'm going to be sluggish. I'm going to be fatigued. I'm going to be heavy. I'm not going to feel my best. So yeah. I can't even imagine what it's like doing a, a world tour or a multi country tour with the pressure. Like, And then the other thing is, like, I wasn't performing. I'm just working yeah. on the back end. Production, yeah. He, he, people are buying the tickets for you. So yeah. if he's not hydrating, as silly as it may sound, Get if he's rest. not taking, you know, care, of himself. taking yeah. care of himself, I could imagine the exhaustion that he's putting on his body physically and mentally, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Like, when he throughout was in... this pot or, or, or throughout this album, we've heard nothing but his quorums and his issues with women and relationships. I'm sure the certain lifestyle that he lives kind of leads into that. That's you know, a reflection it, of what a he's reflection living. of what he's right. living. Like kind of yeah. maybe I can't point. sustain yeah. any type of compatibility or any connection with anybody because I'm always on the road. Yeah. That constant because I'm energy constantly swap. Swapping and energy, yo, constantly yeah. trying to create new music, constantly trying to, to chase too. hits, yeah. chasing mm -hmm. ghosts, whatever it is that he's trying to do. So I think two, three years off for him will do him amazing yeah. because then I also think people will respect him a little bit more. Yeah, we'll miss I, him. Yeah, you gotta the, make him miss you. The next time he drops an album, no matter how good or bad the album is, if you wait three years, I don't know if Joe Budden and Charlemagne and Ebro respond to it the same way that they did now. But one of the reasons they're able to respond to it in that way is because you just dropped a year ago. Yeah. yeah. But I think like, that I think I that's remember smart, being though. outside a year ago hearing her loss. Yeah. And then I Feels remember like a year yesterday. before that, yeah. I was listening to CLB. Yeah. Yeah. And then I remember a year before, like that's why but, I want to commend the work ethic. Yeah. No, I do okay, want to commend the work ethic yeah. is amazing. I do want to commend yeah. it because but I, also yeah. like it's okay to take a year off from dropping. Like it I, is. Bro, it's it like is. when you know? break up with your girl. You gotta like give her a few weeks before yeah, you but, spin the block. <laughs> <laughs> but you know no, what, Savon? But hold on, PM, yeah, my fault. Yeah. But you know what? In a in a time where we're having conversations of, yo. Only X amount of people is making me feel something when they release. Like, even this Drake album, I don't find it to be his best album, but it has enough replay value for me to keep going back to. Meaning, some of his 
Now I'm not even gonna call this worse, but just mid level stuff mm. is still better than these cats that be trying to really try oh, yeah. and release music yeah. on a monthly basis, on a yearly basis. Yeah. So it's like, I do want to respect and give credit to that shit, yo, because mm -hmm. I wish I could get more out of Jay-Z. Yeah. Again, and this is just my 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 own facts. like wants. And right? this is the time to do it because it's a clear lane. Nobody a, else is dropping at the amount of clip that he's, you know what I mean, putting the, out. The little babies who we mm -hmm. thought were going to take it to that level haven't necessarily taken mm -hmm. it there yet. Yeah. Thug is in jail. <laughs> and also like as we've seen like, come on. like as we've seen with every single album of his this is going to age really well and yeah. we're gonna love these songs we're gonna like, look back about the, the, rest the, of the, is, yeah. the fucked up part is yo on the first listen I heard <laughs> it was 9am in the morning and I was like Okay, maybe I should bump it again. <laughs> On the way mm -hmm. here, I'm bumping it. Me too. And I'm craving, Me too. and I'm yeah. looking for the songs that I want to yeah, hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 after, yeah, yeah. After four to five listens, look at where I'm at. And that's Yo. not just about four, it's just about the music. What's the science yeah. behind that? Though? I don't know, bro. That one is mind boggling. What? It is mind boggling. How it just grows on you. How, like how Drake's music overtime? usually grows on you after. But, you know, I came out the gate saying I love Honestly Nevermind. No, I, think, I don't think it's like a crazy science behind it. I think it's just like, don't judge off of your first listen. Like, just don't. Yeah. Like, and you then can't. every time you play, Play it again, you're gonna be like, Oh, I like this, I like this, I like this. I agree with that, but I also think it's the method to his madness, which is I'm always trying to be ahead of the curve, which is why I'm with these oh. young niggas. Yeah. Which is why I'm mm. doing these young sounds. Yeah. So it's going to age. If I'm putting out music that I think is beneficial or that the young folks wants to hear, or that I think music is going in that direction, if I put out an album, an entire body of work that already reflects that a year or six months to a year before that wave actually catches on, mm -hmm. then I'm the man. Yeah. 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 It's just like with he's Afro done beats. it plenty of times. Like Afro sure. beats, I think, is the perfect example. Views. Yeah. I think One Dance and I think Controller. At that time, oh, we were not fire. listening or bumping <laughs> that type of style of music. Yeah. Also, it wasn't, it wasn't we mainstream have, yet. We have like completely, like we haven't mentioned this, but yeah. he always gets so much hate every time we try something new. Yeah. Like we're like, when he every tried time. to do the Caribbean shit, when yeah. he tried to do the singing R&B shit, and every now time. look, they have all been and, like, correct. Like yeah. he was right. Like, And in Toronto, they speak Patois. Like, Yeah, they speak heavy Patois. That's a very good point that you bring up that I like that you bring up because us as Americans get so caught up in our ego. You guys realize, like the black people out there are usually, in Toronto, de are, like, usually are usually derived from Caribbean descent. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. Like I want us to understand these things. That's a Caribbean. Yeah. Like, and here we like, have Caribbean descent like, and African Americans. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And he said, and I remember, don't deny, like this was really the biggest critique. They were like, oh my god, he's a culture vulture. Mm -hmm. But it's like, yo, he's from Toronto. Do like, you know what Toronto yeah. looks like? Toronto <laughs> faked the capital of Haiti. We got mad <laughs> Haitians over there. You know what I mean, there's a lot of Jamaicans out there. Sure. More though, a lot of Caribbean, a lot of that culture. It's a lot of Caribbean and. At that time, when he dropped views, a lot of people were a little bit confused. And like you said, the culture vulture accusations came out. I remember that. And <laughs> it's not that his, and let me not say it's not that. Yeah. Yes, his albums and his music does age gracefully. But I think that's one of the reasons why he's able to sustain the relevance and the ability to keep putting out hits and connecting with people yeah. is because he's always ahead. So we may mm -hmm. not see it today, mm -hmm. but a year from now, two years from now, when we hear some of these songs, some of these collaborations, it's like, oh shit, Drake knew. Like the first time I heard Lil Baby, he was with Drake. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. Fetty Wap, what took him to the moon was when he stood next to Drake, when Drake got mm -hmm. on his song. Mm -hmm. There's the a lot of artists, the Migos. Yeah. Migos, like they yeah. were really good when yeah. I was in college. That's a good point. But they didn't really become mainstream until Drake got on their song. Got on that Versace. And he allowed a platform for them to be like, oh shit, these guys are really good. Yeah. And I'm going to give them that opportunity to show it in front yeah. of more people because I'm on this song. Yeah. That's right. So, I just think now we're at one of those points where I don't know if we're tired of seeing that. Like maybe it's becoming a little bit redundant, but it's a thing and that's a part of his formula. Just like yeah. we see the Kanye West, that's right? The Kanye West, his formula is let me connect with a Travis Scott before yeah. he becomes a Travis Scott. Yeah. Let me connect with a Sai High to Prince. Let me connect with a Pusha T. Yes. Let me connect with people who kind of understand what it is to, to have that hybrid of making a hit now, and having lyricism yes, and blending yes. it together. Like now, People now, have formulas and this is Drake's formula. You're 100% right. Now what might be changing is our age 
and the newer acts that he's deciding to couple and group into putting on and helping, mm -hmm. which might might have people really confused. Like, I think that's what it is. Because but like you said, he's always done this. Yeah, he's yeah. always done it. <laughs> but that's why I was saying, like, we are not his only audience. He's not. And he yeah. knows what he's doing, guys. Like, I feel like he knows what he's doing. So yeah. I, ho I hope you guys really don't think we put on a, a Drake cape today. Um, I feel I would, like we are. I feel I'm, like we criticized it I a fair amount i hope no? so Wait, but like not? this internet shit like yeah. i really am very honest we're very honest here as a, as a matter of fact the <gasps> oh. three of us are yeah, very like, like we don't we don't work for nobody so i'm not honest we don't nah i'm my full p they don't see you on That's cam crazy. right now the you four right. of us right. are very honest you should <laughs> you should hear pierre's michael jackson takes you would all you would absolutely hear how honest he is but yo i just wanted to say that because this ain't no Drake Hobb. This ain't no Drake Cape. This ain't none of that mm -hmm. shit. This but is literally how I feel I about do some wonder, shit. I do wonder, speaking of like aging and shit, mm -hmm. I wonder how this episode is going to age. Are we on the right <laughs> side of history or not? That, interesting. <laughs> I, don't I don't know if there's a right or a wrong in it. We're, we're only just our experiences. And I oh, think that's we what- We could only be ourselves. I'm telling you. And again, <laughs> I think that's what Drake has been showcasing. Oh, yeah, his experiences good. at the time. That's yeah. all we got. And even The one thing I want to take away from this, yeah. and I know it's not going to happen, in a perfect world- I hope and I wish when people hear things about themselves on the internet, they just listen to it in full. Mm. Because okay, yeah, good point. I feel like we wouldn't even really be covering this conversation. Hear things if in context. Drake had listened to the full review because Joe did big him up. He yeah. did big him up, yeah. and I think a lot of people big him up. Charlemagne big him up too. Yeah, Charlemagne said, "Yo, I think the mu music is good." But I think I need a little bit more from Drake. And if you know Charlemagne, he's a big fan of the Kendrick Lamars, um, the Rhapsodies, uh, Killer Mikes. Yeah. He likes people with substance, right? Yeah. And so for him to say that, I think it's on par with who he is. For what Joe said, I think that's on par for who he is. I think what happens is people or your your camp, your surroundings, they, they listen and they try to keep you tapped in. Like uh, today, something came up with Kai Sinat. Kai Sinat, he did a live reaction of Joe Budden responding or calling him out on his podcast. I saw that, yeah. And the first thing that I wanted to do, I wanted to send that to Joe. Like, yo, bro, did you see this? Like, just to give him a heads up. I know it's Tuesday. He's recording. Like, I don't know how he feels about the kid. But <laughs> I know, like, all right, maybe he missed it. He got a lot going on. This is the biggest streamer in the world. It might benefit you to kind of address it. The reason, excuse me, the reason that I didn't send it to him is because I didn't even watch the full context. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so why would I send that to him? Without mm -hmm. even knowing what he's really saying. Dying. Yeah, you good, bro? That's a good point. But yeah. I did catch I did catch the clip Savon is referencing, and I think Kai Sanat was a little upset because he doesn't feel like this was the first time Joe came at him. Mm -hmm. When Kai Sanat had organized the giveaway he was doing when he came back to New York, and yeah. it was like mayhem in the city. And they had to shut, like, the cop. it looked like there was riots out. Yeah. The cops had to come shut it down. You know, Joe did reference that. He was, he said it in a joking manner, but he did say, like, yo, I was so happy when they locked his ass up. Oh, my gosh. So, Kasanat <laughs> takes that as, like, well, damn, what the fuck? People sending me shit about how you've been talking to me. Because, again, right, uh -huh. Joe Budden, 42, Kasanat, 21, 22, 23. 21. 21? Okay, yeah, yeah. got you. He's in that range. So, it's like, of course, he doesn't know what's going on in that world and vice versa. Yeah, right? and, like... And on the show, like it, it, context matters. Like he didn't say it in a hating way. It was probably like in the in the heat of like the podcast moment and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. and if they had a conversation in real life, I'm sure they would love each other. For sure. <laughs> and they got they got history. Because Drake, Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Reggie, you talking about uh, Drake and and Joe? Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, sure. I'm talking about Kai Sinat and Joe. Oh, Kai and, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh wait, no. Do they not like each other? I don't, I, don't, I don't think they have history. I was I was referencing uh, Drake and. Um, uh, and Joe. Okay. Oh yeah. Because Drake I, Drake used to look up to Joe. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. People pointed that. People were quick to point it I'm out. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that that's a point. That style. That's of rapping. yeah. That's a fact. That's why I was just like, I guess one of the songs on this album that he released on Instagram first, and it you know ended up coming out the next day was yeah. the eighty. It was the timestamp one, right? Mm -hmm. The yeah. eighty AM in Charlotte, Charlotte yeah. right? I was I was gonna ask you about that, right? Yeah. yeah, and on that, I think it was on that that third verse. That I just know it was the last verse. Mm -hmm. He speaks to having, you know, some, you know, allegedly some people bowing down in front of him and, mm -hmm. you know, we got it on USBs and shit like that. So, <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah, he was saying now, like, it's another USB I could, like, put up and not put up in it. Yeah. So, you know, Drake could really be talking about a plethora of people. We'll yeah. really never know. Yeah. But yeah, like to say Vaughn's point, context is important. Yeah. A lot of the times, man, people just be feeling like, yo, yeah. I don't like that one thing. Respect at me. The, that's so at well, the I same also have time, a question bro. of like, 
Okay, I, just away from the whole Drake and Joe situation, but this question is inspired by that, obviously. Like, how would it feel, though, if, like, someone that does what you do, so let's say podcasters, whatever, yeah. and they are not as, you know, successful, quote-unquote successful, because that's subjective. They are not as successful as us and have not reached the heights that we have reached. And, like, no one is above critique, but yeah. how would it feel hearing them critique us? How would that feel? Mm. <coughs> no, okay, not just even us, like just no, in general. Question, like, that's a good question. How, how does that feel? Because it's like, I get no one is above critique, that's but it's also point, like, though. hey, clearly what I'm doing is working for me. Like, so who are you to tell me what? Like, that's a good I don't point, know how though. I feel about it. How do you guys feel about I that? See, like, I see what you're saying, though. Up until it gets personal, like, you know, when you start talking <coughs> about what kind of home I got and <laughs> I drive this type of plane, I feel like I wouldn't be mad at the critique, but to Reggie's point, at first it would be. It, I would hurt. I definitely got like a, a Scooby Doo moment. Like, like, like what? Uh, you know what I'm saying? And to my, but then you got to go into your own maturity and kind of yeah. like want to do the deep job yeah. that we're you know and, referencing. And don't be so reactionary. Yeah, yeah. But everything is so reactionary. I don't know because yeah, I don't know how I would feel if like some random journalist was coming at me. It'll catch you off guard. And and I didn't like I'm. I'm like more experienced than them or whatever, whatever. I, I don't know how that would hit. See, what, what's different know. about that is, is like you're having a lyricist versus lyricist battle with those two. Mm -hmm. And Joe is a herald of them, see, <clears throat> say what you want. And so is Drake. Okay. So I guess those are, there's only really two people that can really speak from that perspective. Yeah. And probably that's just the two of them. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You know, with podcasts, it's a little bit different. Like, you know, yeah. there's not a podcast and awards or like, hey, this is my favorite. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. There's, there's a few. A, there's a few. I want there's a few. few. <laughs> oh, he did. Hello. Right hey, put some respect on my, my man's name. You I heard? want a few. There's Yo, a few. put some respect <laughs> on my man's name. Stay complex, going, complex. Yeah, 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 Yo, the other thing I was going to say too is some <laughs> of that next. clickbaity stuff, yeah. that's what kind of gets the conversation going with certain things. Absolutely. Like even what we did with, um, with Ish, when we put the clip, the first clip out, you know, it was kind of on a cliffhanger. So that you can kind of draw more people in. People are intrigued. So when Act posted the the you know the um the little snippet of what uh, Joe said yeah. on his retort, it did what it was supposed to do. Yeah, no funny. And shit. now it's just up to us, like or whoever is viewing it, or, or whoever it's being spoken about. Yeah. To do the homework on all right, what was actually said in the whole thing, and not just in that moment. There you go. That's true. I ain't gonna lie, but everybody's everybody's different. Everybody's maturity <laughs> changes from day to day. I know Savon can attest to this. Some days you can wake up <laughs> super mature. Yo, 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 Don't start your uh, bullshit with my bullshit. Uh, all right? Uh, but don't it's say all I can attest to nothing. It's Just a say what you can attest to. It's all bullshit. All right, I'm a, so I'm a what, uh, what can we attest to? My fault. I'm attest to my shit. Some days you wake up super mature. Uh -huh. Other days you wake up and go play that song about Rihanna. <laughs> it, like, because we're human beings, yo. You know, yeah, we're only yeah, human yeah. beings. So that's for sure. Is. For yeah. sure. Now, <clears throat> I feel like um, we have a, a voicemail. Segment? Oh, yeah. Let's get into this and then yeah. we'll, we'll head up out of here. Yeah, we'll get up out um, of here. For sure, for sure. I definitely want to address this. Yeah. This is somebody who's been showing a lot of love, a lot of support. Yo, from the NFL. Yes. Yes, indeed. Family yes, over indeed. here. Shout out to Let's do it. Uh, we'll get into this. One second. Boom. Mm -hmm. um, actually, let's actually tell What's the up? people where they can find us. Oh, wow. We didn't do that all. We just got right yeah, into it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So each and every week, <clears throat> if you're new to the podcast, we like to connect with y'all. Yeah. Personally, you can head over to our Patreon to gain access to this feature. But there's a voicemail feature where y'all call in. Y'all can ask us whatever y'all want to ask us, whether it be about your personal life, what's going on in the news cycle. Yeah. Um, I know we have a For the Love of Alex, so a lot of the ladies <laughs> call in yeah, and nah, they want to get to know, they get to know him start. in a more intimate way. And I understand that. And they I support that because it's my brother and I want to see him happy. And if I'm lonely <laughs> due to his happiness, I will be that and I will accept yeah. that. But there is a feature where you can go over to Patreon. Uh, which you can find in the link in this episode, in this description, yeah. and leave us a voicemail, and we will react to it, we will listen to it, we will mm. respond to it live on air. Um, and this week, we have a really, really good one. Uh, like Alex said, shout out to our guy. We appreciate him. He catches pick sixes on Bull Sundays. Hawk. Bull Hawk. I trade I trade for him every year on Madden. <laughs> every year on Madden, he, he the first... Get busy. I believe on him. Believe in him. Yeah. 
and I'm happy that he taps into the podcast. He's been doing it for a very, very, very long, long time. time. Man, absolutely. Syracuse alum. Come That's on, the connection now. with Reggie. Reggie, Syracuse alum. So again, shout yeah. out to Shout out to anybody. Long you Island's know. best, right? Big Long yeah. Island's yes, best. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's family in the building, man. Jaguars, man. We Jaguars fans in here. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, what's good, family? I'm going to rant a little bit because I'm a little all over the place about this Drake matter because I'm like, I really don't disagree with the way he replied <laughs> to Joe. I think he was a little sensitive. But I think it speaks to a larger problem, not just with Drake, like, is there a difference between he 36, 37, right? Hanging out with 25-year-olds, doing 25-year-old shit, having sex with them, yada, yada, yada. How do people enjoy their 30s without acting 25? You feel what I'm saying? Like, what, is, what does that really look like? Because Drake is, he definitely doesn't seem like a nigga that's enjoying his 30s to me he seemed like a nigga that's acting 25 that's mm. 36 that's the shit that's <coughs> weird to me like I the music that. i'm not really talking about but just the way he kind of moves and and the niggas he hangs out with and who he tries to appeal to it doesn't look like a nigga that's really enjoying his 30s i feel like when you enjoy your 30s you're doing grown nigga <coughs> shit, making grown nigga moves like, we ain't really seen him build that empire. Like, that's what I feel like a 30-year-old grown businessman would do. Let me know. Uh, I think it starts with getting certain things out of your system. Yeah. And I don't think there's an age on that. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what anything. Like, you ever ran into the person... Who they were really sheltered as a child. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So then now in their they're latter years, they feel like they're getting back to the fun yeah, yeah. that they never experienced before. Yeah. That's and I'm a not, fact. you know what I'm saying? I'm not yeah. saying that's Drake's case, but I will say, right, if we if we're holding what 30 year olds are supposed to be, or you know, how we, we usually view them, yeah, yeah. it definitely starts with how you're growing. You feel me? Absolutely. And, right? And, and your experiences while you're growing. There you go. There yeah. you go. And your surroundings, like how we were saying earlier, can yeah. affect that. Yeah, yeah. Right. So how old is Adonis? Adonis is probably what four, maybe. Okay, okay. Maybe because the reason I ask is because yeah. I'm thinking if Drake had Adonis when he was young or not really ready. Yes. How much of life did he miss? I, I see what you're saying. That he, you know, could be trying to make up for. And and know? that's a very good point, right? And then on the other side of it is like the people that grow up really quickly. Yeah. You can tell that usually they're the more mature ones amongst their peers. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Even yeah, if y'all yeah. were born in the same year. Yeah. Like, yo, that motherfucker had to grow up fast. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he views shit differently. He don't even joke the same. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like so, you. To, yeah. To an you extent. give off like an old, not old soul, yeah. but like more mature than you actually are. People you know definitely I mean? think I'm like 35. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 35 is crazy. Yeah. Niggas think I'm like 30. I'm like, what? Yeah, That's I, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to put an age on maturity, yeah. how, what do you think his age is? On maturity? If, I, if, I, I'm not, yeah, if I'm, I'm not looking mature, at his, do if I'm not looking at his face, I'm wild if I'm not looking at his face, yeah. what my face got to do? Like scale of one to ten? Yeah. Yeah, if, what my face? Not, you know, you know and say, you know and say well, how mature he is. And yeah, what age See, would you give his maturity? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. He a calm 25. 25? Okay. 25. Because okay. cause 25 is just enough <laughs> to be on your business, yeah. but also be on the high okay. side a little bit. I don't do so that. He, he leaves enough <laughs> of that high so side. So not all the way like yeah. wilding, but like yeah. he, he responsible. There you go. At, you know, most 20, you're getting there, right? <laughs> okay. You're like, all right, you know what? He's my he's good brother, though. He's okay. working on my shit. He's good brother. Yeah. So now, say one. Yeah. What would you give Alex in terms of his maturity age? <laughs> Alex is yeah. a good 42. <laughs> well, yeah. the I'm Joe Budden. The 40. nigga too mature. The nah, nigga is fact. too evolved. That's a fact. The nigga makes me fact. better. That's a fact. I don't like younger niggas making me better. I, I like, what's that you, about? You're 27, right? I'm 27. I never met a 27-year-old with the, with the highest. You got the premium insurance, right? He got the premium insurance. A car 42. <laughs> That's like, tough. But an L42. Fact. Appreciate y'all, like, man. Like, Thank you, brother. Like, you know, yeah. I'm still, yeah, yeah. Yo, I'm still we trying. We balance each other out. Let me yeah, get five like A Tom Brady 42. You know what I'm saying? Like, Tom. Niggas look at Tom like, yo, he can go for 10 more years. Like, that's how I feel when I see you. I'm like, oh, this guy don't, is really aging. Don't they say Capricorn's age reverse, though? Isn't that like the thing? I've never heard that. I've heard that. If Reggie was here. Yeah, she, oh, fuck. I just she know we the ghost. That's it. But <laughs> to answer my guy, 
Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, I'm not 30 yet, but mm. <clears throat> being able to kind of put on that lens and having friends who are a little bit older, and I'll be 30 this year, but yeah. I, I, I can yeah. imagine that Drake... So when you get put in a position, when you get introduced to somebody in a certain light, you kind of take that on. You take shape of what it is that you are. Mm -hmm. So... When you enter a friend group, like shout out to Antoinette over on the Can Afford Therapy podcast. That's my home girl. Um, we've been really tapping in with each other. And one of the reoccurring themes in her life is she's always the responsible, reliable friend. friend. Yeah. Meaning whenever there's plans, she has to plan it. Mm -hmm. She has the itinerary. Okay. She she is the go to point person for that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when you introduce yourself as something you will always be held Fake to beat. that. That's true. And so I think Drake, he got introduced as the person who changed the sound. Yeah. He got Ooh, introduced as the younger, the young money, young money. Yeah. He was young money. He right. was the leader of young, young money, money yeah. when, when Lil Wayne yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. introduced his group nothing, to people. He got really vulnerable on a lot of those early albums. Yeah. So yeah. what I believe, based on your question, is... The reason that it feels like he's not aging or that he's trying to capture or maintain a certain uh, relevancy or age demographic yeah. is because that's how we embraced him. Yeah, That's how we fell in love with him. Yeah. So why wouldn't I keep giving you keep what, it is what it is that, that you love me for? Yeah. yeah. Cause yeah, you're right. Anything, that's any that's a very good point. Young money. You're right. Yeah. Any a young money, right? Anything yeah. different. You don't know what that looks like yet, and that could be very yeah. frightening. And I think that's yeah, why sure. Joe replied. Yeah. He said, uh, "You'll you'll soon understand, right?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Father time, Father time, something about that. <laughs> is gonna catch up. Something yeah, like that. Like I'm in my yeah. early thirties, right? Right. So I could definitely, um, you know, speak, speak to this to from it. experience. Yes, absolutely. So you are old, he is also yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Yo, you old Marital as shit. status? Uh, yeah, married, married. You old and married? Um, yeah, bro. It's called, it's called evolution. <laughs> it's called it's Tell called maturity. Me. You don't know. You will soon learn, my brother. <laughs> Father Tom. Hey yo, hey yo. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm not even gonna do it to you. I'm not even. Gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was about to try to find you a little something, something, but Please you know what I mean. Please I'm, don't. I'm trying to get get y'all over yo, on this side. Yo, it's good over here. My sister's working. Oh, Remember, she we brothers now. Though. We brothers. So like, once you get into your early thirties. Like it's almost like a you're you're in a juxtaposition, right? In the sense of, you know, you're not too far removed from your twenties, but at the same time, like yo, forty look a little closer than it. It looked like it's right you, there. You know what I mean? Like it's knocking on the door. But right, right. at the same time, a lot of who you hang out with really hones in on like your identity. It becomes who you are. Mm. So if if I'm hanging around, like even now, most of my friends are either my age or young. Actually, I have. One close friend, like a brother, he's two years older than me. Mm. And for the most part, most of my other friends are younger. Mm. And if I'm honest, I feel younger. <laughs> you wow, know what I mean? Yeah, that's what and it's not, it's not me strategically being around, being around younger people to feel younger. Mm -hmm. But that is a fact. When you hang around younger, you feel younger. Um, in reverse, if you hang around older, you feel older. You feel more mature. Like you, We've all heard of the insta instances where... Um, you know, kids had to grow up uh, a lot sooner than what they initially wanted to. Like you, you, we wound up taking care of your sibling earlier than yeah. you wanted to, and you miss out on on a lot of certain things. I'll even make a reference, um, a Pokemon reference, right? For all the people that used to watch Pokemon, when you evolve a Pokemon prematurely, there's certain aspects in its in its repertoire that it's missing out on. That shit come out. <laughs> yeah, save on, save on, <laughs> yo. Say Vaughn, yo, you can make and a go point. They're going to your maturity. <laughs> That's you, a fact. They're going to 25. Yo, he's not. Nah, he's like 12 right that now. That nigga's crazy. Primo, baby. He's like 12 right now. crazy. <laughs> you call it the Primo. Nah, that's so wild. So if that shit came out, we, we were that saying shit the, might we, be a little... We were saying the makeup was different. <laughs> Well, yeah. Oh, this nigga bro. is crazy. You see where his mind go, though, right? Like, we, 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 we saying the makeup would be different. It's, it's just a little different. You know what I mean? Instead of six feet tall, bleep that. It might be. I'm not trying to get you killed. Five four. Yeah, five. Like that. But, crazy boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but, but with Pokemon, right? Yeah. And I was an avid watcher of Pokemon. I didn't really <clears> mess with it when the cards and stuff came out. Oh I'm shit! Like, yeah, you was with the show. It was wild. Yeah. 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 Um, Got to catch them all and all that stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> there in the show, if you evolve the Pokemon prematurely, there yeah. are certain aspects of its um, makeup, makeup, and its fight that it's not it, like it doesn't. <laughs> like, this guy's crazy. It's not as fast. <laughs> it's, Yo, stop <laughs> saying premature, bro. Right. Just use a all different. Because right. my brain can't so handle that. Certain shit. things it can't do, as all opposed right. to if it if it evolved. 
<laughs> this guy's nuts. Shit this guy. Yo, bleep that again. Yo, please, that nigga still getting smoked yeah. in the battle. Yo, Kira. <laughs> he evolved too early. Yo, Kira's off the hinges. That nigga pick his shit. Stop whooping Kira, ass please on that this. stupid nigga. <laughs> Every time we say that word, just put a flag on it. We can keep all this. Just put a flag <laughs> on it. The Pokemon came out too soon and got cooked up on the battlefield. Stupid ass nigga. See, niggas, you can't ever... Nobody yo. told you to come out yo, early. He, he's six now. He you I'm, yo he Benjamin Button. He, was, <laughs> he went from twenty five to twelve. Yo, you see that? He aged in reverse. Yo, use another word for premature. Find a syllable. Uh, I don't know, but whatever, synonym. whatever. It is, a syllable. He said syllable. Find a syllable. Yeah. Oh, shit. Woo! Um, but basically, like, oh my God. there's certain things you miss out on when you um, grow up faster than what you would do normally. Yeah, yeah, for so, sure. To answer your question, <laughs> um, I think it's just based off of I question it as like okay. What did he? What did Drake maybe missed out on in his developmental years that he's almost trying to get back? And you know that's a very good point because we saw what he what he acted in, right? Yeah. The grassy the was grassy. a big part mm, of his coming point. up. Wow, that is that's so a great. great. Point. That is that is so interesting that you bring that up. And then yeah. you become one of the rap's biggest stars, yeah, yeah. and you tour, yeah. and you go on the road, and yeah. you're always outside, and people love you. And in wow. and, and production, like as a that. kid. You got no time for anything else. For sure. And that show had a long mm -hmm. run, right? It did have a run. So I imagine how, yeah. much, how much time he had to be in the studio. Yeah. How, uh, how many other people he had to be around with, uh, around, and just everything that comes into like what you have to uh, do before that. You know what I mean? Wow. So I'm pretty sure you missed out on a couple things. Birthday parties. It's a very good And all that stuff. Yeah. So, That's yeah, a yeah. very... Years where he felt like, you know, he could have lived whatever... He, year he was supposed to feel like. <laughs> yeah. 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 I just yeah, I'm not mad at it. that. No, 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 not at all. Yeah. That, I, I'm not mad at that. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, like after listening to us, I think yeah. we certainly did this album review, this Drake fiasco, yeah. this chapter justice. Did we do yeah. it justice? I think so. I, I think we did. I still I got so. just one question. Just one question? What's up? Talk to me real quick. Kieran's going to kill you. But go. <laughs> yeah, Kieran is going to kill you. Last question. Fine. Yeah. Only question. Why, did, <laughs> why does it seem like it was just so out of nowhere for him to take that shot at Rihanna like that? Those shots. Bro, I told you. you don't understand what it's like. Though? You don't yeah. know what it's like rapping on Fat D, nigga. You're right. I never you know put, what it's like. No, when you You're rapping right. on Fat D. I never I know what it's like rapping over shit. Fat D. I can't say nothing to Nah, you. Drake just, did, though. But I ain't going to right. front. Put yourself. <laughs> keep it a buck, though. Okay, talk to me. Drake, you know, Drake be on IG. He used it, obviously. He's I'm always posting more stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, he done seen uh, yo the blogs repost <coughs> Rihanna, ASAP Rocky yeah. every other day. Another photo shoot. Yeah. Oh, another picture here. I'm sure Bruh. that pen got to working after the fifth blog posted them for but the day. Yo, imagine getting dubbed like in front of America. Yeah, that was tough. That was tough. Like you think that like he that eats away. That, at him, absolutely, man? yo. I can see how that, you got you gotta say yeah, sex with you wasn't that crazy. Yeah, that's like when Shorty <laughs> say your dick little. Yeah. And you're like, bitch, I was giving you every <laughs> single <laughs> inch. You every, love every, every last stroke. Oh my sister. Listen, yo, yeah. with that being said, yeah, yo, it's been a need to know podcast. Please, yeah. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. If you have, share it with a friend, let yeah. your friends know. It is what it is. Uh shout out to Cameron, shout out to Mace. I named my dog after Mace. Yo, all everything <laughs> is just very He's connectivity. Not lying. The connectivity is He's not in right now. Yeah. And most most importantly, uh, please leave your opinions on everything we said here. Yeah. You know, we want honest feedback. Yes. And we love when you guys speak to us, especially in the yeah. YouTube and the Apple uh, reviews. So, yeah. And pray for Savon. He got to mature yeah. a little bit, but we working on we, it. You know what I mean? Nala said, we're going to get him. We gonna You're get the one him. who wanted to him. talk about the Pokemon. I didn't say nothing to that. This has been a Need to Know podcast. <laughs> what you need to know, what you need to know on the Need to Know podcast, I'm leaving here. Peace. I'm gang, 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 gang. Yo, and make sure y'all go spin that fat D real quick. That shit on the ones and twos. Request your DJs. When you see me in the street, holla fat D. Yo, Alex, who is this? <laughs> <sighs> gang.